This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm. Feel free to share your thoughts with us on whatever is important to you. Coming up, apparently the NRA, according to Lauren, is coming out against open carry. And Lauren is joining us, a.k.a. Objectivist Girl. Good evening. Hey, Ian. It's great to be back. It's yeah, been a long time. You had to take a week off, so yeah. that's why you haven't yeah, been and- heard from. Yeah, I had to do some stuff for objectivism, top secret stuff. You're launching a new show and everything. We can talk yeah. about that maybe a little bit later. Of course, awesome. Mark Edge here as well. Uh, and I'm Ian. So let's jump into the news. I've been teasing this one for a couple nights. We haven't gotten to it yet. It's uh, another update. Just go ahead from, and read it, Ian. From Venezuela. Uh, and we've talked about some of the just crazy stuff going on over there. You can't, uh, it's hard to get toilet paper, for instance, in Venezuela because the government has all kinds of price controls on uh, products and restrictions that make doing business very, very difficult in that country. And um, there's a situation with their money system that will be described here at Bloomberg.com that we've touched on before. And it's interesting how it's how the uh, the government's setting an official rate versus what the actual market rate is for their bolivars, I believe it is, uh, how that really screws things up when the government says, our money is worth this amount. And then the market says something completely different. What it is that happens in I'm sorry, that discrepancy? Whose money? The Venezuelan <laughs> government money, the Bolivar. No, governments don't have money. Well, they, they print steal it. their people's money. They certainly do, but they can also, <laughs> the way, and, and of course, they can print it out as well. And that is also stealing the people's money because <laughs> when you print money uh, that other people already have, it makes that money worth less. Creation of currency is such a valuable, um, profitable industry. The governments have killed people over it uh, for hundreds of years. The arrival of a lo- this, by the way, from Bloomberg.com's Anatoly Kurmanev. The arrival of a Liberian flagged freighter with Ukrainian, Arab, and Filipino sailors spells one thing for Elena: dollars. And greenbacks are king in Venezuela. The 32-year-old prostitute says, within hours of hearing the ship's imminent uh, hearing of the ship's imminent arrival, she has packed her bags and is heading to the crumbling city of Puerto Cabello. It is a 450-kilometer or 280-mile journey from her home. A port that shaped in some way or another like a horse. From her home in the western state of Zulia that Alina finds herself doing more often now as Venezuela's economy contracts, the boulevard slumps and prices soar. Prostitutes more than double their earnings by moonlighting as currency traders in Puerto Cabello. Prostitutes double their income by moonlighting as currency traders. That's correct. I mean, Does this mean that pimping's gotten easier? <laughs> I don't know. They don't know if they talk about pimps in this uh, no, in this Mark, story. No, <laughs> pimping okay. ain't easy. Your pimping's okay. got harder. I'm not sure. <laughs> they are the foreign exchange counter for sailors in a country where buying and selling dollars in the streets is a crime and prostitution isn't. Greenbacks in the black market are worth 11 times more than the official rate as dollars become more scarce in an economy that imports 70% of the goods it consumes. Elena says the dollar is king these days, but having them comes at a price. She uses uh, uses an alias to protect her identity, and late last month in a room she rents in a Puerto Cabello brothel, she said, yes, we got dollars to afford the things our families need, but we have to sell our bodies for it. The benefit of the trade are stacked around Elena's room in the Blue House brothel, bags of rice, flour, sugar, and cooking oil, products that other, other Venezuelans have to line up for hours to buy at regulated prices in shops, if... They can find them at all. The boulevard has fallen to 71 to the dollar from 23 on the black market since Nicolas Maduro, the president, succeeded his mentor Hugo Chavez in April of 2013. The government tightened currency handouts to stem the outflow of foreign reserves, which are near a decade low, and the official exchange rate reserved for imports of food and medicine is 6.3 boulevards per dollar. So the official rate... Yeah, is you 6. get 6.3 bolivars per dollar. But the actual market rate, what a dollar's actually worth when you trade it illegally in the black market, 71 to 1. Yeah, ten that's a big difference. times. More than 10 times the difference. Gosh. That's going to give it a lot of purchasing power. 
The dollar mm. shortage is turning Venezuela into a two-tier society similar to the Soviet Union and Cuba, says Steve Henke, professor, a professor of applied economics at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Those with access to dollars such as prostitutes, tour agents, airport taxi drivers, and expatriates are able to shield themselves from inflation by trading their greenbacks at even higher rates. And those who can't are seeing their living standards decline. In a country where prostitution is legal, it's the black market in dollars that Maduro has called perverse, saying it was designed by the bourgeoisie to destroy his socialist government. Who else would it be designed by? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, look, Maduro, it was designed by your government when you decided to set an official exchange rate and enforce that at the threat of violence. That's when things went off the rails. Yeah, when, when, once you have an expectation of what something's uh, supposed to, to cost, then it's uh, you, you know you run into all kinds of problems. Officials have tried jailing traders, shutting down brokerages, and setting up four parallel exchange systems to stem the rise of the unofficial rate in the 11 years since Chavez began controlling the boulevard's price. Prostitution has become the only boom industry in Venezuela's biggest port. The Blue House brothel is clean and well-kept, with a patio and kitchen where women get three meals a day. Outside, the squares and cobbled streets of the colonial center stand in ruins, with the smell of sewage pervading the piles of garbage. Before, I was working to support my kid and my mom, and now I support my entire family, said Paola, a prostitute who, like Elena, comes from Zulia and declines to give her real name. Dollars are the only way to get by, she says. The boulevard wages of my uncles and cousins barely mean anything now. I, I really think this is a, a good moment to take and um, recognize that without prostitution, that many more people would be starving. And this is a really, really, really great example of why prostitution should be legal. Yeah, because I, people should be able to choose what they want to do with their life and their body. The, mm -hmm. the lady um, in the article here earlier said that, uh, you know, she gets she makes good money, but essentially she makes good money, but she has to sell her body for it. And what that says to me is, is that she doesn't want to do this work. And, I, you know, immediately what I felt is this, is this empathy, right? Like, oh, man, I mm. wish she didn't have to do this, 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 this work, prostitution, when she doesn't want to do it. But then I started thinking, you know, I'm sure my dad didn't want to get up at 4 a.m. to go be a mold maker at Tropicana. And, um, you know, I'd see him come home with burns, you know, molt, molten metal burns on his arms. And, Ouch. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, there's lots of jobs most jobs is probably where people don't want to do them. And, uh, you know, lots of the reason plumbers get good money is because they play in poo all day, right? Um, mm -hmm. And play isn't the right word. They have to work in poo all day. That's the reason they get good money. And they probably wish they didn't have to do it. And I, I guess, I guess that's, I guess that's why they call it work. Right. And when you're meeting needs uh, that other people don't want to meet, meet, when you're in that small market space like prostitutes or, you know, plumbers or whatever, uh, what have you, you, you end up making a lot more money. And so sometimes for people, the value judgment is the money over the um, over the stuff that they have to do yeah, in order to make it. But when you put in that desperate situation, like you are in a socialist country, I mean... It's hard to make any kind of value judgment besides I want to live. <laughs> any task is going to be in one of three categories. I will. Um, you know, I am unwilling to do that for this pr that price. Um, th there's a price for it, right? Mm -hmm. Like for any task, there's a price. I am unwilling to do that task for this price. And sometimes it's zero, right? Zero dollars. Mm -hmm. um, um, I am so I am willing to do that task for this price, and I am more than willing to do that task for that price. You know, if uh, somebody offered me. A million dollars for prostitution? The answer is yeah, indubitably. Um, if if it's uh, <laughs> you know if it's uh, five thousand, it'd be like I guess I'm. I suppose I might be willing, depending on the situation. And if mm -hmm. it's five dollars, no, unless it's Lauren or something, right? Oh my! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Prostitutes in Puerto Cabello charge sailors a fixed rate of sixty dollars per hour. They also help foreigners arrange their rooms, telephone cards, and taxis, charging them in dollars and then paying their landlords and drivers in boulevards. So that's, uh, you know, it's not a bad rate, uh, $60 an hour even in the United States for doing any kind of work. 
and then they can take that $60 and then transfer it illegally in the black market into boulevards to pay their rent with, and they're doing pretty well. Uh, but we'll talk uh, more about what's happening down there in Venezuela. Get your thoughts and calls here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Take control here on Free Talk Live. Can education be separated from the state? Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. These transcripts are given to potential employers as proof of coursework. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of getting a transcript associated with your name, you can obtain cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Then, apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your government-sanctioned name. Since mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously, you can be sure that you will not be discriminated against or shown favoritism due to your race, gender, political or religious views, and so on. There is only one factor by which you will be judged, your ability to reason. Be at the vanguard of separating education from the state by visiting mathgate.info. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster call right now 800-981-7590 800-981-7590 get out of debt now 800-981-7590 The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. (laughs) 
This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves toll-free. Just dial on in here at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about the crazy currency crisis, if you will, in Venezuela, where the boulevard is worth... uh, a lot more on the black market than it is at their official rate and some of the consequences of that and what it actually means, how that works out in real life. Um, Apparently, it's working out real well for the prostitutes. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE and join us on Skype at username lrn.fm. Need focus? Feeling fatigued? Trying to get that extra edge where it, when it counts? There's just so much going on all at once in our lives these days. Every moment, it seems like we can't keep track of everything and we're tired. Don't you wish there was something that could get you out of the rut and give you the focus you need and help you get things done? Well, there may be. Modafinil from ModUp.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, greater focus overall so that you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about modafinil from modup.net as how it's making a difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. You can check check out modup.net and look into it for yourself. They offer fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high quality modafinil at an amazing price. And modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. That's right, you can order from modup.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. To make the deal even sweeter, use uh, code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So use that code FTL. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know of local prescription requirements and how the laws apply. Please recommend, um, we recommend that you look into it for yourself, but we're sure you'll find that modup.net offers a great service at a great price. It's modup.net, use code FTL. All right, back to the story from Bloomberg.com. And certainly if you have experience in Venezuela, uh, whether recent or not so much, would love to hear from you with your input here ever since uh, President, well, actually for the last decade, uh, when when Hugo Chavez was in charge, they uh, they pegged the the exchange rate of their currency, the bolivar to the dollar, at a, a certain number. They have updated it since then, uh, but it's still really, really low in comparison to what the actual exchange rate is in the marketplace. After Nicolas Maduro, the successor of Chavez, came on the scene in 2013, the Bolivar has fallen from uh, from 23 to the dollar to 71 to the dollar in approximately one year's time. Oh, my God. I, I mean, at some point, people are going to stop working. Or they're, well, they're they're, pro- they're probably keep working. doing uh, barter at this point rather than um, using. The, I imagine the there's a lot of that going on, and certainly what the article here is focusing on is what it's like when you can get dollars. If you are one of the one of the people in the country who has access to dollars, you are doing pretty well in comparison to the rest of the people there. And prostitutes are some of those people. They're now making more money exchanging dollars for Bolivar than they are at the actual prostitution. A typical stint with a dollar-paying foreigner would earn a prostitute about 6,800 Bolivars in fees and currency exchange arbitrage in the black market. The same service paid in Bolivars, which Elena and her friends would grudgingly accept as a last resort, would earn them 3,000 Bolivars. So by, by charging their customers in dollars, they're able to more than double uh, the amount of money that they they take in from any given client. Just think what they'd be able to do with Bitcoin. Ooh, that's a good point. I wonder how uh, I wonder how accepted Bitcoin is down uh, in South America. In this case, in we uh, should in tell them all about it. We can make more in two hours here than working in a shop in a month. Said a prostitute who calls herself Giselle as she sipped a twelve-year-old whiskey in Club 440 striptease <laughs> joint. Apparently, she's doing very poorly there. The shortage of dollars has led to a scarcity in the shops of everything, from bottled water to toilet paper, and pushed prices up 59 percent in the year through March, the last month for which figures are available. The jump in prices, mounting shortages, and a crime wave have fueled three months of anti-government protests that have cost the lives of at least 42 people. The price paid by investors to protect Venezuelan debt against default rose three basis points to 987, the highest in the world after Argentina. According to data compiled by Bloomberg, the price of the credit default swaps implies a 49% chance that Venezuela will stop paying bondholders in the next five years. 
Now, bond is one of those things that when you buy it, it's like they tell you it's a guarantee, right? Like you give us well, this money and you're going to get this this percentage back. It's supposed to be more stable, but um, I mean, there's bonds have different ratings, mm -hmm. and uh, apparently their rating is ain't so great. But that is the idea behind a bond, right? Is it like well, you're buying money from the government, and so therefore not every you're bond is a bond uh, is a, is buying money from a government, yeah. and you know bonds with lower ratings have higher interest rates. That and you need to remember that the government won't uh, take won't give you silver when you bring those silver dollars in. No, they I've sure got, won't. I've got a few of them, and the I'll tell you what, on, yeah. I'm never going to get any silver. I always thought it would be fun to just as an aside to, to, to you know take a camera crew along with somebody like if if you wanted to try to go and turn those in at the Federal Reserve office in Boston to try to I don't know if they'll even let a camera in the front door but to actually record what the interaction is like between you and whichever government agent uh you know tries to service you and tell you no Ian I am so in. If you want to do that, I am so in for that. I just that. don't want to go to Boston. It's just an idea. Take it or leave it. <laughs> yeah, we should go. It'd be I, great. It'd I be hilarious. I try to avoid leaving New Hampshire at, uh, <laughs> at any cost. I feel the same way. <laughs> you know, like I just every, don't want to cross those borders. Yeah, every time I leave here, I feel like a little part of me dies. <laughs> there you go. The economy contracted 0.5% in the first quarter from a year ago, according to a median estimate of seven economists surveyed by Bloomberg. Economists at Goldman Sachs forecast last month the Venezuelan economy would shrink 1.3% this year, and GDP expanded 1% last year. We're going to defeat the parallel dollar, said Economy Vice President Rafael Ramirez, as he announced a new currency market. The system, known as CIAD2, allows companies and individuals to buy dollars in restricted quantities for about 50 bolivars each, an 88% devaluation from the official exchange rate. So it sounds like even the government is trying to compete somehow with the black market. It's bizarre. The boulevard has slumped 17% in the black market since CIAD2 started, according to the rate-tracking website dollartoday.com. A finance ministry spokeswoman, who can't be named because of internal policy, didn't reply to phone calls in an email seeking comment on the black market rate. And a spokesman for the president's office, who asked not to be named because of internal policy, declined to comment on the president's plan to stem the rise of the black market rate, inflation, and shortages. Drinks vendor Luis Alberto Paredes lives with his sister and their 85-year-old mother in the shell of a colonial house covered by corrugated iron in Puerto Caballo's old business district. His walls and roof are adorned with flags and posters of Maduro, Chavez, and the Venezuelan Communist Party, and his mobile kiosk is covered with photos of pro-government mayor Rafael Lacava. Yet the 52-year-old is losing trust in Chavez's successor. He says Maduro has been a total failure. While sipping coffee at home, people wow. are getting fed up. I think it'll explode sooner rather than later. Paredes, who lives on a minimum wage of about 4,200 bolivars per month. Remember, that's less than what one of those girls charges for one interaction Evening. with a client. Yes. We'll uh, come back with more. There's a little more here from Venezuela. What it's like when you've got a crazy black market exchange rate for uh, dollars to bolivars versus the official one. It's ten times the official one in the black market. It's Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to UnseenNow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. UnseenNow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at UnseenNow.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com help get lrn.fm into more ears visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker flyers banners graphics and more promote.lrn.fm this is free talk live you can bring up whatever's on your mind by dialing in toll free at 855 450 free that's 855 450 join us online just head over to freetalklive.com enjoy the features that we share with you and if you'd like you can get interactive right there on the front page you can submit content to freetalklive.com and then other free talk live listeners can vote on it and of course you can vote on things as well vote up what you like and down what you don't like over there at freetalklive.com. You will need a free Reddit account as well as a Free Talk Live account. You link the two together in a very simple process. Only takes a moment, and it'll be easy for you to uh, submit content and vote in the future over at freetalklive.com. Now, when we manage to create robots that can look and act like humans, androids, will they be our slaves, our masters, or our partners in exploration and prosperity? Quantum Vibe, the science fiction adventure webcomic, suggests the answer is all of the above. As our heroes continue to uh, their epic mission to open a vast new frontier, they encounter an android slave culture on terraformed and corporatized Mars, and later join forces with a liberated android friend to avert a deadly disaster in the freewheeling asteroid belt. Quantum Vibe Volume 2, Murphy, collects these adventures in a 161 full-color page printed volume and is available now from Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and BigHeadPress.com. If you want to buy your copy of this fine, fine uh, printed material, you can go through our shopping link at shop.freetalklive.com. Then you enter Amazon through the links there and buy your Big Head Press comics through our shopping link at shop.freetalklive.com. That's Big Head Press. You can also um, get to see Quantum Vibe for free. Um, they, you know, That's right. And, and all honestly, they've got a whole bunch of different comics there at bigheadpress.com. You can go to quantumvibe.com directly. But um, go to bigheadpress.com and see all the free online comics that they've got. We were talking about uh, the Venezuelan economy and how the exchange rate works. There's a government set rate of how many dollars per boulevard you will receive, or rather boulevards per dollar, and it's six-something to one. 
bolivars per dollar, the government rate. Mm -hmm. Then there's the uh, unofficial rate, the market rate, the actual rate, what dollars are actually worth. And that's more than 10 times yep. the amount. So you get over 70 bolivars per dollar on the black market, which, of course, is like kind of an average. So depending, it's all more of like who you know. You know, you might be able to get them for 50 bucks uh, or 50, 50 bolivars. You might be able to get 50 bolivars. You might be able to get 90. You know, it just depends on who you're trading with. Anyway, there's what a little they're bit. willing to, you know, that's, that, that's supply and demand, yeah, right? Yeah, there's a little more here from Bloomberg. Paredes, they're talking about a man who runs a, uh, some sort of a... A little kiosk sells stuff um, in the marketplace. He lives on a minimum wage of about 4,200 bolivars per month. That's about $60 at the black market rate. He says he has to buy coffee beans for his stand from street hawkers for nine times the regulated price because the supermarkets are always out of stock. Yep. One in four basic products were unavailable in shops in January, the last time the central bank published scarcity figures. The percentage of households living below the poverty line rose six percentage points to 27.3% in the second half of last year. And if you're poor in Venezuela, you are probably really poor. Mm. You know it's bad when the government is actually admitting that they're poor. That because, one out of four uh, people, yeah. Y- you know, um, the government will deny it until the moment that it's so ridiculous that there's no way they can deny it any longer. So you know when the government's actually admitting that the country is poor, you know it's bad. And this is a communist government or self-proclaimed oh, so communist. So people's even paradise. worse. Yes. Even worse. <laughs> and so um and they've and they and it's not new. They've been they've claimed that for some time. So they're basically declaring their uh, their own ineptness when There's they Chicago. Talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago, Maduro. come come um, come for the food and stay because you got murdered. Oh my gosh. No, but I mean, did you hear about the the bailouts in Chicago? Um, Obama put disaster relief money into Chicago to bail them out. No. Yeah, you didn't bail know about that? Bail them out that? from what? Uh, from their um, their uh, bankruptcy. Bad fiscal policy. I hadn't you, heard Chicago you know was going filed, bankrupt. Yeah, they filed bankruptcy, and they won huh. their case. You didn't hear about that? No. I thought this was Detroit. We've been talking yeah. about Detroit quite a bit, but I hadn't heard anything about Chicago. Yeah. I'm, huh. We'll have, to look, we'll have to look into that. Indeed. That's, uh, that's certainly I, I news I think it me. was Chicago. Maybe it was Detroit. You maybe might want I'm, to check that. Maybe I'm confusing it with Detroit. Big dying Northern I'm sorry. Town. They seem the same to me. Anything that's not New Hampshire is, is, is you know. I got you. I know the feeling. <laughs> so, again, there's uh, one more than one in four households are living below the poverty line. So, I'm sorry. That's one in, more in, one in four households. It means probably more than one in four people. Uh, first, let's see. So, that's uh, in the second half of last year, the first increase since 2010, according to the National Statistic Institute. Maduro, the president, said June 3rd the figures from the government agency are unofficial. So, how it is that... <laughs> How it is that uh, figures, statistics released from a government agency are considered unofficial is an amazing just twist of, uh, you know, newspeak. We just don't recognize it. For women like Giselle, Elena, and Paola, prostitution for dollars has become a life uh, lifeline, keeping them from poverty. We haven't studied. We have no education. What would we do now if we stopped, said Giselle. Work for a minimum wage that doesn't even pay for food? If we wouldn't be here working on the scene, we would be living on the streets. So there you go. Latest from the Venezuelan breakdown of the economy. It's just, uh, it's terrible. I mean, I, I feel for the people that, that are living on that uh, that particular plot of land. And I mean, we can't even understand what it's like to have trouble finding toilet paper. I mean, this guy's paying nine times as much for coffee grains on the black market because he can't get them from supermarkets. So, what you know, what's a roll of toilet paper go for in Venezuela if you can find it? Yeah, currency manipulation always hurts the people on the lowest levels. Um, we had uh, one point a caller call in and say um, something to the effect of that uh, the U.S. citizens um, benefit uh, more, th- you know, more than uh, poor people around the world from the manipulation of the dollar. And I would say that it's uh, probably should be. Stated less um, I mean, that, in fact, most even poor U.S. citizens are harmed less by the inflation and currency well, um, he, policies uh, surrounding the dollar than people, poor people around the world are. But I think that that's what has caused the middle class uh, crisis that's uh, going on in this country. Well, you know what that is, right? I mean, you understand how that works. So most of uh, the U.S.'s uh, poor 
isn't even employed. So, of course, when you inflate the dollar, you inflate how, inflate how much food and products cost. Necessarily, so, yep. so they're spending more money when they're not making any money in the first place. So, of course, inflating the dollar isn't going to help the poor. I mean, I mean, that's just on a, a grander scale. I mean, we could go down further on the line and, and tell you exactly why it is that it doesn't help the poor. Uh, on it a lower, help anybody. On a lower rung than that. But, I mean, that's the very obvious one. The only people who get helped by inflating a currency is the government because they get more money in their coffers and then the people they pay first. So the big corporations that they're tied in with, the military contractors, they benefit from inflation because they get the money before anybody else does. So it's an immediate benefit to them before it can kind of the inflation can sort of trickle into the economy. You know, I've been debating lately whether we should even call the dollar money anymore. What would you prefer to call it? Well, the thing is, I'd like to call it debt. Because honestly, every single dollar that's printed is just um, is, it is a note of debt. That's yeah, true. it's yeah. a note of debt. So I I really hate calling it money because it it downplays what Bitcoin is. Because Bitcoin doesn't come with that debt. I mean, and that's that's one of the great things that many people don't talk about with Bitcoin is that it's one of the few uh, currencies out there. Um, it, cryptocurrency is the only currency that doesn't acquire debt with it because it's created by you. I mean, you break down blocks and you do all of the work to gather the Bitcoin. And well, you don't have to. What you're talking about is I mean, the miners, you don't have you to. You can, you can buy it from those people. But the point is, is that it doesn't come with the cost of manufacturing and it doesn't come with the cost of labor. So it's, it, it's truly the only real money out there. And I think if we say anything is money other than Bitcoin, it's just doing a disservice to how great Bitcoin truly is. And Bitcoin really is a game changer. Actually, I've got some Bitcoin related stuff here, awesome. including a young man. 15 years old, who's now made $100,000 on Bitcoin. We'll tell you what he has done with some of that here in a moment. 855 450 free. And then also the Free State Project getting major press coverage in Forbes magazine. Plus, Lauren can tell us about the NRA. They are apparently making a huge mistake. Uh, but we'll uh, come back with more in moments on Free Talk Live. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. 
Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, take control toll-free here. 855-450-FREE, that's the number. You can dial in toll-free, and you can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is LRN. Dot fm feel free to reach out that way if you prefer you can get on the air to talk about whatever happens to be on your mind more on the hundred thousand dollars that a 15 year old made on bitcoin in moments people are buying real estate right now the numbers are coming in the looks like the housing market's bounced back and for whatever reason whether it's a refinance or to get cash out or you're buying a home maybe you're buying a home for the first time there's a really good choice out there to get your mortgage, and it's Mortgage Minute Guy. Roger Schlesinger has been an advertiser here on Free at Talk Live for many months, maybe a couple of years, and he's been on talk radio for, uh, he's a big name on talk radio, been on for years. He does his own um, little minutes, the Mortgage Minute Guy. And he's, uh, he's, he's the kind of guy you can trust, really. Get a second opinion in the mortgage industry. I mean, you'd be a fool not to. Give him a call. The number is 866 288 Zero zero eight eight. It's mortgageminuteguy.com. They just redesigned the website and it looks awesome. Again, the number is 866-288-0088. If you're looking at getting a mortgage right now, second opinion, you'd be a fool not to. 866-288-0088, mortgageminuteguy.com. To the phones first, then we'll talk about the young man who made $100,000 on Bitcoin at age 15. Tom's in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tom. Uh, yeah, your show, the confusion I just heard reminded me of that Jackson Brown song there. Got to drive all night and do the show in Chicago or <laughs> Detroit. I don't know. <laughs> one, one of those cities, you know. But uh, speaking of, of the One stu- of the places that's <laughs> not New Hampshire. You did look, Lauren, and you did... Uh, it was Detroit. Yeah, it was Detroit. I, I, I swear I do it all the time. Uh, yeah, They're anyway, so similar. Uh, I was reading <laughs> some... There's a news story going around about how uh, the recession in uh, Europe and North America is tied to an estimated 10,000 suicides. Because, you know, these people are under all this stress because, like, maybe uh, his wife is going to leave him because he, he can't find a job. And he keeps calling the temp agencies thinking maybe this time, maybe they'll send me out on a job. Go, signing into the day labor pool, and instead of getting sent out four days a week, now it's down to three, then it's down to two. I mean, and are they going to get kicked out? What are they going to do? And they kill themselves. Mm-hmm. And unlike those that couple that went out to Las Vegas and gunned down a couple of cops, these people kill themselves. And... Uh, that is right, not, what are you suggesting there, Tom? Uh, I'm suggesting they should not kill themselves, and they shouldn't go into Walmart and gun down a human either. A human? Are you saying that cops what? aren't humans? Is that what you're getting at there? Uh, 
I didn't say that, no, did no, I? I think his point was that you shouldn't kill anybody, right? No, he what, usually what, dances what? around uh, the idea of killing the police. He won't come right out and say it, um, but you know that's kind of what he's getting at here. But I'll let you answer for yourself, Tom. Go ahead. Uh, I think that uh, I, I just want people to imagine, imagine if all of those 10,000 people, instead of uh, killing themselves, went out and fought back against the government. You know? I wanna, here's what I want to know, Thomas. What do you think the world would look like if that if that was the case? What I mean, utopia. St- 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 step me down the road because I just can't imagine that um, you know knocking off five thousand cops, if, if you ever got that far, is somehow going to create a better world. Well, yeah, I tell you something though. Uh, taking away everybody's money, all of their money, wouldn't really. If nobody had any money and no, no, nothing to buy stuff with, then there would be a lot of chaos, too. But taking away just a little bit of their money every time they park in a crosswalk serves as a deterrent. It tells people don't park in a crosswalk. And if like every time the cops uh, enforce the recession, all these unjust laws that could create the recession, if uh, the, these people went just, just took out, you know, oh, I don't, they wouldn't have to exterminate all the cops. It would only have to be enough to serve to deter the fat, stupid, ugly old ladies from re-electing candidates who support the recession. Well, now, tell me this. So there, there are two cops in on this, uh, this revolution you're talking about. How many do you need to go in in order to send the message that you're looking to, uh, to send? Because I don't think that police officers today... Um, in any way feel like they've uh, been sent a message that they need to uh, not enforce particular laws? Well, I don't know what it would take, but, I mean, uh, it, that's anyone's guess. At what point, uh, you it know— It doesn't sound uh, like an answer to me. That's right, because I don't know how many it would take for that to happen. Well, yeah, I don't think that uh, I mean, even okay, if people did start morning. bumping off the police, I don't think that the message would ever get to the old ladies who are voting for politicians that who they voted for and somehow in some way would end up stopping the killings of the police. I don't think they would make those connections in any way, shape, or form. And I tend to think if that— they, Go ahead. Well, let me answer that. If they arrive in Concord one morning, and there's— dead cops on the state house steps and a letter that says now uh, legalize all drugs or the rest of your cops are going to be uh, taken out yeah, tonight. I don't think there's that's going to work. Thanks for the call, Tom. Yeah, Appreciate hearing cops. from you tonight at 855 450 free. Oh my gosh. I just don't think violence is the means to the end that we're seeking, which of course is peace. Um, well, I don't think taking out their, you know, <laughs> it's, it's darn hard to win chess by taking out the pawns. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's a solution. Many. Well, you don't mean that people should go and kill uh, kill higher ups. Well, I, I'm only. That's I'm, I'm just saying that. this is a terrible system. That's all I'm saying. The killing. You're is not going to get. System. You're not going to get the higher ups. This is the thing. Is is that it's a. I believe that the government is a is an organization that really understands force and violence. And that you're not going to have any success using force and violence against an organization that is far more well uh, armed than you are. They're prepared for it. I just don't understand how any logical person can support violence um, in any way, shape or form against the government or anything else. Um, I just the idea of using violence to try and get peace. It's just illogical. It's not strategic. It's just bad all around i just don't understand every justification i've ever heard for it is so bad that it's just it's it's like a straw man theory it usually usually tends to be emotional you know people feel like they're at their wits end there's no other solution they have they can't figure out what they should be doing and um this is what you do resort to it you you bring people to philosophy You help them understand how to think about themselves, first of all. And because people are don't think that they're competent and don't think that they can do things for themselves. And then you come move out to New Hampshire with a bunch of peaceful people and you promote that and you you bring people to a movement. I mean, I mean, I started my channel so that people would be able to think for themselves and we could finally see a peaceful revolution. And I'm telling you that there is no need to kill anybody there's just not i mean not with tools like objectivism and 
um, and Liberty.me and Free Talk Live. I mean, the message of Liberty is getting out there. I'm sorry it's not fast enough for everybody. I think that's part of the, the frustration. Give me a break, from really? People who want to turn to violence is they feel like somehow it's going to be faster. The you know that that we'll get to freedom faster if just some blood is shed. Ah, oh, the the tree of liberty must be watered by the blood of patriots and tyrants. And, you know, there's all kinds of exhortations to uh, violence in the past, and of course they'll point to examples well, where you know, violent revolution have worked. might have been the way to go about doing things a hundred and something years ago, when communication wasn't nearly as good. But the fact is, is they've done you know studies. Uh, the Erica Chenoweth uh, book that we we um, it's called uh, Civil Resistance, I believe, uh, and they're uh, what they what she what they found the two college professors that did this study is is that over t- over the last century, which is the 20th century, starting in the beginning of the century, that nonviolent protests were twice as effective as violent protests, and by the end of the century, they were three times as effective. Okay. So I did an article on this exact topic, and it is called My Objective Response, Derek J. Freeman's article, Chris Cantwell is All Wrong. And basically, I called them both out on things, but I mainly called Chris Cantwell out. Well, um, good, because I actually had a Chris Cantwell-related story here. We can talk. We'll put the right. Bitcoin guy off for a little bit while we but jump into this. What I said was that—and I talked about violent revolutions and why it's logically— Uh, ridiculous to consider it. So I weighed the pros and the cons. So our first option is a violent overthrow. Benefits, potential win, potential rid of certain tyrannical leaders, and potential reestablishment of our negative rights. Costs, lives, businesses, this is sure to result in an economic downturn and a loss of trade with foreign allies, or at least temporarily. Uh, The opportunity to educate the public, the opportunity to advance our private sector business so that we are prepared for such an outcome of liberty and many, many more. Our second option is a peaceful movement. Benefits, the opportunity to educate the public, the opportunity to advance technology, high moral ground, a philosophical renaissance, a wider support within our nation, the ability to become a role model for other countries living under a tyranny. And I go on and yeah, on and on. Yeah, let's go on with that in a moment. The only cost is the approach will take more time. That's it. It certainly will. And uh, it, we'll come back with more discussion. In fact, copblock.org has recently jumped into this discussion as Chris Cantwell was on their staff. He no longer is. We'll explain why that happened here in a moment. Uh, they've actually got a statement up on their website right now. More coming up here. Hour two's on the way on Free Talk Live. You take control. Want to know the secret to success, kid? One thing, the Granger catalog and Granger.com. Okay, that's two things. Oh, and Granger's got mobile apps. Those sure are convenient. Three things to succeed. Hey, and 1 800 Granger. I know that number by heart. Four things. There's hundreds of branches, too. Like I said, the one secret to keep this place running smoothly is Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Lumber Liquidator's low flooring prices just got even lower with the Buy More, Save More sale on now. Save $100, $300, even $500. The more you buy, the more you save on over 300 varieties of laminate, hardwood, and more. Save on striking and durable bamboo, including easy-to-install solid-click strand bamboo for just $219 a square foot. That's 37% less than other flooring stores. Go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Plus, get special 15-month financing. But hurry, this sale ends June 17th. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, June 12, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,264. Silver opened at $19.27. And Bitcoin is trading at $626.41. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours. Voiceandexit.com. And support comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Online at accountableauthority.com. In the news, supporters, neighbors, and family members gathered at a memorial honoring the 27-year-old Florida MMA fighter who was executed by the FBI last year for his alleged connection to Boston bomber suspect Tamerlane Sarnia. Abraham Todeshev was shot seven times in his Orlando condo during a final round of interrogation by FBI officials, all of whom have been cleared of any wrongdoing in the killing. Investigative reporter Julie Wilson attended the memorial and spoke to nearby residents who doubt the FBI's narrative of what happened that late summer night. When I heard about the investigations, I said, this is a sham. OPD don't want to get involved. I always thought the FBI was straight up. But when I heard that he unloaded seven shots in this guy, it could have been a personal thing. They don't even release the guy's name. Usually they got the cop's name or the agent's name. No names. For the complete story, go to thelibertybeat.com. On Tuesday, the Supreme Court ruled that police officers may enter and search a home without a warrant as long as one occupant gives consent. Ruling 6-3, to three, the court gives law enforcement greater authority to search homes even when an occupant has previously denied entry. Justice Samuel Alito Jr. said police officers do not need to wait for magistrate approval before entering a home. The dissenting judges warned the ruling would erode Fourth Amendment protections from warrantless home searches. Google acquired Skybox, a company that provides high-res photos and video using low-cost satellites for $500 million, extending their reach far beyond the Internet. Skybox transforms mass quantities of unstructured data into revenue-generating insights, streaming aerial imagery straight to Google. The captured aerial imagery is beneficial for a variety of industries, including companies tracking cars and parking lots to predict retail forecasts. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering Pro Pure Water Filtration, the only gravity driven all in one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street or online, bravenewbookstore.com. This is The Liberty Beat for Thursday, June 12, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Revelations of slavery and torture tied to the shrimping business in Thailand, as reported by The Guardian, has gained the attention of the U.S. Washington is set to address allegations of human trafficking in Thailand's seafood industry and could result in blacklisting the country. Thailand could be downgraded to the lowest level on a list that ranks the country's willingness to combat slavery. If reduced to Tier 3, the country could face sanctions and lose financial aid. A veteran Border Patrol agent linked the recent influx of migrants from Central America to rumors of amnesty by the Obama administration, reported Judicial Watch. American tax dollars will fund care for the tens of thousands of youths expected to enter the U.S. over the next two years. Sources confirm many teenage migrants have ties to gangs, yet will still be released into the country. Media outlets in Central America are deceptively describing detention centers in Texas and Arizona as being accommodating. Don Ray, the executive director of the Texas Border Sheriffs, said humanitarian groups and social resources are struggling to keep up with the recent surge of migrants. Relocation services are particularly strained, similar to conditions following Hurricane Katrina. Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio told KTVT the migrants should stop complaining and compare their conditions to those of their native countries in which they fled. Conditions in the detention center are expected to improve with the assistance of FEMA and the Coast Guard. The vice president of the National Border Patrol Council said the detainees' number one complaint is that they prefer corn tortillas over the flour ones they're being served. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal, affordable high-quality printing. Now accepting Bitcoin, online, massappealinc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, June 12, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile.
Saying that he has no idea what to make of the mixed signals, area man Pete Summers told reporters today he keeps getting ambiguous text messages from local woman Haley Mueller, claiming that she's not at all interested in him. One man, she's like, um, I don't want to go out with you. And then she'll mention how she has to go hang out with her boyfriend. I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? Summers, who first met Mueller at a friend's party last month, informed reporters that the 27-year-old's increasingly perplexing text messages have left him unable to ascertain whether or not she would want to date him. He also noted that Mueller's behavior at social gatherings was equally vague. Last weekend, we were at a party, and every time I would go up to her, she just said, leave me alone. Then I text her the next day, and <laughs> she totally doesn't even respond. I mean, she just needs to make up her mind and tell me what she wants. She hasn't answered my last three phone calls, so maybe I should go over there and make sure everything's okay. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the second hour of the program. You can take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features that are waiting for you there. Again, freetalklive.com. We've got Skype, by the way. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. We uh, are going to talk about this Bitcoin 100,000 air. Or whatever you call him, he's 15 years old. He's earned 100 grand on Bitcoin already, and uh, what's he going to do with it? Well, we'll share some of that with you here in a moment. But we ended up going off on the violence topic, thanks to one of our callers last hour. And of course, this has been in the news quite a bit recently with the the shootings of the police officers in Las. I think it was Las Vegas or just outside of uh, yeah. Vegas. And uh, certain people within the liberty movement have been celebrating these shootings. It has resulted in some controversy uh, within the movement and also outside of the movement. Uh, in fact, Lauren's got a story from Raw Story about talk show host Adam Kokesh, who we've had on this show a number of times in the past. He's making headlines now for taking, essentially taking Chris Cantwell's side of the the violence advocacy and saying that it's okay to kill cops. I don't want to put words in his mouth, Lauren. You're going to actually read some actual yeah, quotes, some excerpts. We're going to get to that here in a moment. But first, let's go to the phones and talk to Corby in Houston. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Corby. Hey, I was just calling to re, uh, say a rebuttal to the guy that was advocating for killing cops, but I think that sets the liberty movement back five years every time that happens because mm. that tells them to justify martial law or whatever they're going to do next to, you know, they're going to, we can't beat them with force. We can beat them with, you know, peace and outthinking them and just not supporting their, you know, their tyranny. But that's, you know, really all I wanted to say. Okay. I'm with you, Corby. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Let's go to Nathan. Nathan is in Texas as well. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, everyone. Hey there. Go ahead. Uh, whenever this topic comes up, I always think of Etienne de la Buete's essay, Discourse on Voluntary Servitude, and the line, you know, resolve to serve uh, no more, and at once you are freed. And I think that's really true because the, you can't solve a problem with violence that isn't completely, you know, it doesn't completely have its origin in violence. Um, at least that's how I, that's how I read the essay. So uh, having not read the essay, um, can you sort of explain how he gets uh, to this point, um, how he, you know, the, the points he makes to support the idea that if you just re resolve to serve no more, that uh, you're then at that moment free? Well, to him, the really big thing about politics was why do people obey? Like, you know, why do people follow the rules that these, uh, you know, Pete, the looters and moochers or what, or what, I don't know what Lauren calls them, but, you know, <laughs> why, why do people follow their rules? And uh, it can't just be violence because there are so few of them and there's so many of us. Um, there, there must be some kind of consent uh, underlying it, some kind of passive acceptance is basically his point. Well, there's also social pressure as well. I mean, well, people, there's, there are people who are afraid of violence, and there are also people who are afraid of what their neighbors will think. And I also think we need to be really careful about um, us versus them because there really is more groups than just them and us. Um, I would say that there are looters and moochers, and by that you need to understand objectivism and understand that um, we're not saying that about um, 
poor people were saying that about people who are actually stealing money. And I want to clear that up very quickly first. But the second thing is that there's also this large group of people that is completely unclear with what it is the government is doing and is completely um, deluded and has been infantilized so long that they they're they're not clear on all of this. So, the, so the thing is is that there's this large group of people that's unaware, and I think that's the majority of people, and that's that's where your problem comes from. Well, it's good Ignorance that you bring that good. up. No, it isn't. It's good that you bring that up because <laughs> another thing that Mark mentioned last segment was some kind of study about um, nonviolent, uh, the impact of nonviolent resistance. Was that what it was, or was it a book? Yeah, it's a book, um, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll post it up on the Facebook page. But it was uh, by two professors, one of which is named. We had her on the show. That's why I remember her name over the other professor. It's Erica Chenoweth, and I believe it's called Civil Resistance. Well, you see, I've always thought that uh, the thing with media, or, or in this context of nonviolent resistance that we're talking about and that Labuetta advocated, um, it's kind of it kind of depends on media exposure in a sense of people knowing, you know, because if you go back to the 1960s, you know, part of the impact of people going into lunch counters and getting, uh, you know, getting th- blown away by water hoses is that people saw it. People saw it on television. But it seems like today the media is so centralized that people – like there's all this liberty media out there that people make, uh, but nobody really sees it because everyone's kind of tuned into the mainstream media. Mm-hmm. And I mean I've seen people – and maybe your experience is different, Ian, Mark, Lauren, but in my own experience, people just kind of are like programmed robots when they watch the media. They turn on CNN or Fox News and they just kind of take whatever the message there is and just uncritically, like robots, start to parrot it. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's absolutely true, and I'm probably, as, um, at, at least to some extent, guilty of it myself. Um, on Free Talk Live, for instance, we're careful about which news stor- sources we'll, uh, we'll talk about, and therefore there's probably been stories that were legit stories that we don't talk about here simply because it doesn't have the right news agency's uh, name on it. Not to say that that's entirely what we do. But, um, no, we use independent I, I guess, media frequently. We do use independent media, but there's some independent media we won't use and some that we will, right? Well, like chemtrails.com, I'm not really interested in putting what they have to say <laughs> right. on here. But, the, but you know, you know for, uh, for a fact that the government sprayed stuff stuff out of planes at some point or another. Yeah, at some point. Sure. Yeah, they did actually admit to that. So, Nathan, anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, no, that's all. Have a great Thanks night, Thanks for guys. the call. Let's go Thank to Erod. You. He's in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live. Erod. Yeah, hey, guys. Hey, go hey, ahead. Um, 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 Mark, you covered this story uh, oh, uh, about a week or so ago. This is about the botched police raid where the baby was badly burned when yeah. a flashback grenade was yeah. sent in. Terrible. Yeah. Well, today, yeah, today, you know, I'm in Georgia, and this happened in Georgia. But, and uh, I was, I was listening to a, an interview with the mother, and she was saying, you know, how the how badly they were treated by the police. Uh, the husband was, you know, was detained for a while. Uh, the police were constantly telling her to shut up, and the police told uh, the father, I mean, you know, imagine this, you know, your kid's all burned up, and he wants to know what's going on, he, and the cops are telling him to shut the the blank up uh, and threaten to arrest him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my, my, my anger was just boiling and boiling in the point. But anyway, this Saturday coming up, there's, there's going to be this rally and this protest up at the courthouse where, uh, in the county where this occurred. Now, I've never been a kind of person to do all protesting and that sort of thing. But I said to myself, you know what? I mean, you know, there's been so much crap going on that I really feel that, you know, I, I, I need to be there and I'm going to be there. But the, my, but my question is this, you know, I, I, you know, I started thinking and I am going to be there this Saturday, but my question is, and you guys have much more experience in this sort of thing than I do, but I was I kept on asking myself, what does that really do? I mean, what am I what are, what are they hoping to accomplish by even having the masses of people there? What will it do? Where is the protest yeah. taking place? It's just a smaller it's town, isn't happening, it? It's happening in it's in Hammer. It's well, it's 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 in Hammersham County, uh, in Georgia, which is about probably about an hour and a half uh, north of uh, Atlanta, and this is the, and this is where they lived, and it's going to be at their at the courthouse. At the courthouse. Place. So, uh, so to answer your question, the, to the best of my ability, having done a number of protests, sign wavings, things like that, mm-hmm. um, there's a few different purposes or points to it. One is the hope that you might raise awareness, that uh, the signs that you have, 
may entice a driver or passerby to Google something or to visit a website that might be on your sign to acquire more information about what the protest that they drove by in, you know, 20 seconds uh, was all about. That's probably one of the hopes. Uh, two, the protesters may be hoping to influence politicians, which probably is pointless to uh, to hope that with a protest. Uh, was it Alexander Haig who said that let them protest so long as they pay their taxes? Don't you think really that a protest that is timely is more effective than a protest that is not timely. That, sure. That yeah. when there's, there's more likely to get people to come out. When there's out. momentum behind it, that uh, the politicians that do agree with the message are more likely to get what they want, push through. I mean, I kind of feel like... Nobody's going to restrict the police. I mean, that's this not This protest happen. makes more sense than most because the police can change their policies. They won't, though. The third uh, reason... They've already talked about changing their policies. The talk is cheap. The third reason, and they can change the policy, but it still won't stop people from hurting others in the future. And we'll give you the third reason here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Stand by, you Quantum vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system. On a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com from Big Head Press. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. Amanda Bolso here from Midas Resources. Today, June 10th, 2014, gold opened at 1261.10. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1307.17, 653.59 for a half ounce, or 326.79 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's 1307.17, 653.59, and 326.79. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. It's The Onion Radio News. All seven deadly sins were committed at a church bake sale. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Avarice, sloth, envy, lust, gluttony, pride, and wrath. All seven of the fabled deadly sins were committed on Sunday at the twice-annual bake sale at St. Mary's of the Immaculate Conception Church. According to St. Mary's treasurer, Beth Ellen Coyle, church-sponsored events are a notorious breeding ground for these treasonous acts against the Lord God. This is supposed to be about the glorification of God, not violating His Word. Do that and you're no better than that cheap strumpet Melissa Wyckoff with those sinful chocolate cookies of hers. The Seven deadly sins were first outlined in the 5th century by Gregory the Great, who himself was, as indicated by his very name, toying dangerously with the sin of pride. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind. All you have to do is dial in toll-free. We've got uh, violence on the table as a topic. Again, uh, we'll get into that here. Cop Block has spoken out. They have thrown out Christopher Cantwell. We'll explain who he is and uh, what happened to result in that over at copblock.org here in a little bit. Your call's welcome on whatever happens to be on your mind at 855-450-FREE and join us online at freetalklive.com. Speaking of not using violence to solve problems, the premier anti-war website on the internet is libertarian. It's not liberal. It's not progressive. They don't get to claim that. And I, for one, am very pleased that this is the case. And that's why I want antiwar.com to stay around. And the fact is, now's the time to do something about that, if you feel the same way as I do. Because uh, between fines levied against antiwar.com a few years back by the federal government, the death of some major donors, along with those who panicked after the revelation that the FBI was monitoring antiwar.com, they didn't want the trouble. They want peace. They just don't want the trouble, right? And they found themselves in a, they found themselves in a tight spot. They cut staff in half over the past several years. And the remaining staff is, of course, spread very thin. Right now, the top folks there are, in fact, foregoing their salaries. Wow. That's how serious stuff is. They're committed to keeping the website going, but they need your donation. So please go to antiwar.com, donate, or call them today. They do take Bitcoins. In fact, they prefer Bitcoins. They call it the peace currency. Antiwar.com, they believe like you believe it's antiwar.com slash donate. All right, we're going to go right back into your calls and thoughts. Erod, uh, waiting patiently here to continue the discussion about protests. There was the story about the police in Georgia. There, uh, What was the county? Habersham or something like that? Or <laughs> what was it called, Erod? Are you back with us? Do we have Erod? Maybe our board operator has not yet uh, turned up the potentiometer. Anyway, Erod was calling about a... Uh, uh, an incident with the police tossing a flash grenade, flashbang into a nursery, apparently, right into the crib, uh, from what I understand, with a very young baby, a child in the yeah. crib. Landed right it, in front of the baby's face. And again, it's a, uh, uh, whatever, it, maybe it was a smoke grenade. I don't know. But whatever it is, it you know has some sort of flaming flashbang. propellant. It was in flashbang. It. Uh, well, either oh way, gosh. either way, you know, whatever you throw that's an explosive device into a crib with a child is going to do some serious damage, and in this case, it certainly did. People are upset. There's a protest that is planned for out in front of the courthouse uh, in that town, and Erod had called in to tell us about it and, and also inquire as to what is the point, because he's never really been motivated to go to one of these things before, but now he's feeling like maybe he should go is it worthwhile to to go to something like this? And I, I went through a couple of points as to why people do this, why people protest. I've done a lot of protests, sign wavings and that kind of thing. I was actually just out in front of the jail uh, last weekend. Uh, we've resumed the free Rich Paul sign waves outside of the uh, the local jail here because our friend Rich is uh, is back in jail on a violation of probation. So <laughs> I'm I'm no stranger to doing uh, doing a protest or a sign wave. And and I'm the, also the first person to tell you I don't think they're particularly productive. I, uh, I but you know, I don't know of any activism that's that's particularly productive. Not imminently, not visibly, not like wow, that was awesome you after know, the fact. I will tell you. Why do you do it? Oh, Erod, you're back. Okay, good to have you back. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's um, something to do. I mean, well, it's better than doing nothing. The other thing is, is that I don't, I'm not buying that it's not effective. Because when I was in college and I started my Objectivist Girl Club, I put up signs all over the place saying, who is John Galt? And tons of people showed up 
to that meeting because they no want kidding. to know the answer to it. So if you, I think it's not that it's that signs are ineffective. I think it's the things we're putting on signs are ineffective. Could be. Could very well be. Question, so my, questions make people want to search for information. That's true. They really, really do. Um, so my third point was going to be that they can also be good. So the, the first two points, one, outreach. You know, people are driving by. People are walking, biking by. They're going to see you. They may Google something. They may want to go and answer whatever question you're asking. They may do their own research. Because obviously you can't communicate an effective political or opinionated message in the 10 seconds it's going to take somebody to drive by and glance at a sign. The best you can hope for, I think, is for them to, to ask themselves, what were all those people doing there? And then try to you know look for something that was included on one of the signs. The, poli- the p- potential for influencing politicians seems very, very low, but that's also a motivator, I think. That's why this one is happening. They want the politicians to see... Uh, that the, that they're serious and they're angry. And then the third one, I think, is that you can meet people. Um, so if you go to this particular event, uh, Erod, you will probably mm-hmm. meet a number of people who you otherwise would not have necessarily gotten in contact with, and that can result in future action, uh, maybe you know getting together and forming some sort of a, a, a group or um, you know f- future meetings to try to determine where things should go from here. And so uh, it's a networking event as well to some extent. But what are, many oh, of the okay. pre- go ahead, Iran. Go, go ahead. Okay, no, no, I was okay. going to tell Ian that he was uh, he's usually early on. He goes to these uh, he's he he, pro- he he tries to be the ground in which the protest grows out of and that's going to be less productive than a than a protest like this one because these police officers are feeling the, and this police agency is feeling the pain. They're embarrassed by what happened according to the newspaper are articles. They? Okay. That's that's no, what the newspaper. You know what Mark let me interrupt, you know, cuz I was listening to uh, the interview of the mother today, and 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 they did initial. Well, first of all, they lied to the parents, saying that oh, it's just uh, the baby just uh, the, they saw blood, and they said it's just her, uh, just the kid's tooth or something that fell out, you know, and not telling them that. I mean, the baby's face is blown off, mm. and so they lied about that, and then they came back and said, uh, and then and had some sort of press conference or something, and said, "Oh yeah, we're sorry," and this and that. You know, it was a it was a tragic accident, and this and that. And but you know, the the, the mother made a point today in the interview is that well, if they're so sorry, you know, and when the interviewer said, "Well, are there any flowers or any anything in the hospital room?" No, there was nothing. No flowers, no cards, no nothing. You know, they yeah. just go ahead and um, you know just. Just almost killed this kid, and the kid may die. I, hope, I pray to God that the kid doesn't, you know. But the kid still, you know, is in serious uh, condition here, and you know, it, it's the whole thing. I mean, the heartless bastards when they threaten the father, to, you know, for a arrest. I mean, your kid's face got blown off, and you're telling him to shut the f up, and and you yeah. know, and threaten him with arrest. What sort of heartless bastard does those sort of things? So again, in these protests, yeah, and what have they done to the officer in question? I mean, is he on paid vacation well, while they investigate? You know what? I, I, it was part of a team. I've heard nothing. I don't think that this would be a I bet one. They this, won't do anything to him. This isn't a one officer thing, though. I mean, they were this officer. One man fl- flung that grenade. Yes, but he was ordered to by the guy who's in charge of the SWAT yeah, team, that's and true. that SWAT team was put in play by the chief of police. And you can believe the chief of police isn't going to suspend himself over this. No, he all sure they're going to do is they're going to say anything. sorry. I don't think that they particular won't even do that. that particular police officer isn't to blame. This is a policy issue. They they had a policy that they're just going to bust the door in. The the guy they're looking for wasn't even there. They didn't do the proper checking. It's just like, hey, let's put on the SWAT gear. It'll be awesome. And, you know, they blow a kid's face off. And it's this is why they need to feel the pressure and why I think in this case that going to the uh, to a protest is worth it. Plus, you can support the family to some extent, and they need yeah. they need support at this time because the family's going to feel go from feeling bad to feeling even worse if nine people show up to their protest. Okay, so bottom line is, though, you think that it, it is worthwhile. Though. I think it, it is. It, it, something will be. Okay, If yeah, it's convenient for go, you. If you have to yeah. drive a long way. I wouldn't drive a thousand I, miles I do. to do it. I, I do, but after that interview, I, I made up my mind. You know, I got to go to something. I Erod, let something. us know how it goes. Bring thanks, a really good sign. Thanks for the call. And a camera. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, all you. good ideas okay. in case the police show okay. up. Want to buy or buy right. the crowd. <laughs> thanks for the call. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. 
And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is novelist Tom Robbins. When my mother was diagnosed with glaucoma, her conservative Virginia physician told her there was only one treatment that might ease her pain and save her eyesight. That treatment was medical marijuana, which he could not prescribe. I offered to get her some and teach her how to use it effectively, but my father objected because marijuana was against the law. So my mother, who loved to read and walk in nature, was condemned to grow cruelly, unnecessarily blind. Tragedies like this happen all the time, but they don't have to keep happening. To learn more about medical marijuana, call the Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or visit them on the web at mpp.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you would like. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, uh, Bitcoin... Young man has uh, made $100,000 in Bitcoin. We'll explain uh, what the entrepreneur is up to. Also, the violence issue. It has reared its ugly head yet again with uh, folks like Chris Cantwell and now Adam Kokesh joining the ranks of the openly advocating, apparently openly advocating the 
uh, the killing of police officers. It's a big controversial issue, not just within the liberty movement, but nationwide as well. After I don't the, get the impression that's what happened there. I'm not quite ready to go. What happened with I, what I need Adam to hear more. Kokesh said? Yes. Well, I heard Lauren quoting some of the things out of the Raw Story article, and so we'll get to that here in a moment. Your call is certainly welcome. The toll free number is 855 450 free. And Mark, tell me how to get a pound of free coffee. You go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's that easy. Go there, get a pound of free coffee. And not just any coffee, shade grown, 100% organic, delicious, top 1% grade Arabica bean coffee. And if you continue to, you sign up for a subscription, you can cancel that subscription anytime. We'll send you the free pound. You pay for the shipping. We make it easy on you to try out BuzzBox Coffee because BuzzBox Coffee is great. What they do different than other high-end coffee producers, their price commensurately, is that they make it possible for free for people around the world to get micro loans for every ten. Uh, people who order their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, and I thank the dozens and dozens of people that have, um, I, they're able to give another microloan to another family and give them the hand up that they need in order to get out of poverty. And so you'll drink the coffee you normally drink, or coffee that's better than the coffee you normally drink, and you'll help people around the world. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Let's go back to the phones and the fun. Your calls. Welcome here. Jack Frost. Calling us from North Carolina. Hello, Jack. Hey, uh, thank you for taking my call once again. Sure, go ahead. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? Super. Go ahead with your thoughts, uh, Jack. Hey, um, I uh, wanted to uh, speak to the uh, comments that were made uh, supporting the uh, the murder of police officers. Uh, those um, comments were not made on this show. I'd just like to make that clear. That well, they were made by caller. Yeah, made by they caller. weren't like, made not, by us, but they were the made host. on the show. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> go ahead. Oh, no, no. A- absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I heard it was an individual who called in. And, and you know, here's the thing. I, I can tell just by listening to that guy talk that you're, you're not a warrior. And, and most people aren't warriors. Um, and when, when I refer to that, I refer to people who... Um, the definition of a warrior is someone who is willing to take the fight to the enemy. And if you are the kind of person that goes around making public statements like that, by definition, you are probably not a warrior. You are a person who is essentially the human equivalent of a very small dog with a very loud, noisy, shrill yeah. bark. You're a talker, not a not a doer. I mean, otherwise you do it, right? Exactly. And, 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 and here's the thing. I honestly have come to the conclusion that any time I hear anybody advocate for any form of violence, I immediately dismiss anything they have to say because they are either a fed, uh, they have been programmed by, by that ideology, or they are some sort of agitator that is trying to further demonize um, the liberty movement and other associated movements. So, I mean, it's just, it's just automatic. Anybody that calls for violence, I think it is safe to dismiss them and anything they have to say, because if you're not willing to abide by the non-aggression principle, then get out. Well, their argument, and, I mean, just to take the uh, play, play the devil's advocate here, because I'm very familiar with their arguments, um, having once been on that side of things. Their argument is that uh, they are not aggressing against the police, that the police are the aggressors. They are hurting people on a regular basis, and so therefore it's completely legitimate to use violence in return. Well, let me clarify my position on this, and maybe it'll you know, help everybody see where I'm coming from here. Um, I'm not a warrior, um, but you know, I have had the very good fortune to spend a lot of time and to train with and to compete against people who are true warriors. And I'll just leave it at that. You can use your imagination and fill in the blanks. Um, These people, by and large, are extremely sympathetic to the liberty movement. Yeah, Um, I would absolutely agree. Many of them are, in fact, um, I I hesitate to use the word sleeper cell. I I prefer the term Stand alone complex, uh, but that's a topic for another. Are you day. talking about the police? Um, yep. No, I, I am talking about. No, the, the police aren't even on the scale, the Richter scale of what I'm talking about. What kind of warriors uh, are we talking about here? I'm just, I'm I, just curious. I would, 
I'm referring mainly to combat arms and special operations. I'll okay, just leave military. It that. Yes. Many of them and, go on to be uh, police, but anyway, go ahead. Well, you know, and and again, you know, you have that that concept, the standalone complex, but that's that's you know we're diverging. Um, I want to say ninety percent of these people are extremely sympathetic to liberty movement, and when you start talking about preemptive violence um, and just outright murder, you're not winning any allies. Right. You're not. You're not. You know, you're you're just you're giving them more reason to believe the propaganda, which is that we're all a bunch of Tim McVeighs waiting to happen, and and that's why our rights need to be taken away and we need to be put in camps. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that has been the narrative that has been spun in the in the mainstream media about liberty-minded people. And when well, people I can like tell you, that, I was listening to the Stephanie Miller show um, a couple of days ago, and it's a it, lefty talk show. Lefty talk show, and it's really entertaining. She's funny. <laughs> She's funny, and they were. It was really amazing because in one, uh, you know, while I was driving to the location I was going, she was talking about the Bo Bergdahl situation and how we need to be not rush to judgment and we need to find out what happened. And then in the next uh, segment, as I'm driving home away from the place that I was uh, uh, went, it's about an hour later. She's then. Talking Talking about the um, the situations with the shooters in Vegas, and immediately jumping to uh, conclusions and not waiting until we get all the facts. So, in one case, she wants to wait when it benefits her guy in office, and um, in the other situation, these liberty people are dangerous. I don't know what terminology she was using exactly, but you know, tea party tea baggers. That was the mm-hmm. terminology she's using. And uh, you know, I mean, I don't consider myself a tea party uh, guy, but. I got some sympathies there. I've got some sympathies to the left too, but um, I, I just thought it was it's they've got they've taken sides and absolutely they believe that uh, people who believe in uh, more personal freedom are dangerous. And, and, and that I think needs to be the central thesis of the message is that if if you are going to have that kind of rhetoric and if you're going to play into the bear trap that they've set for this movement. Then, then you just need to get out. You're not you're not doing anybody any favors with that kind of rhetoric. You're just giving the other side what they want, and that gets used against people who are sympathetic to our cause. That gets that gets used on them because they sit in briefings and they listen to this kind of stuff, and it it makes them less sympathetic. And these are the people we need on our side. And and I, I just I really just implore that person, whoever he is or may be, please reconsider your rhetoric. Well, I you mean, know, I, I, I appreciate I, 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 Jack, I appreciate where you're coming from and uh, thank Me you for too. calling We're and sharing that tonight. However, what you have to understand is that that rhetoric is very popular. Uh, yeah, Chris, the brutalists are really pushing it right Chris now. Chris Cantwell, a brutalist is a term that sort of describes this viewpoint of, uh, you know, libertarian violence in response to violence. Kind and of it's thing. growing, and that's what scares me about the whole thing is that I think it makes our movement look so scary when there's a lot of really peaceful people yeah. in, in this movement. But unfortunately, the louder people are the ones that are wreaking havoc and advocating violence. And it, it's really unfortunate that well, and Chris Cantwell, we don't who, have stronger voices is kind of one of the focal points of this for the liberty movement yeah he's not a parade and got out in front of it and apparently kokesh now too so right well we'll get into you've got the story about kokesh uh we've had on the show a number of times in the past we've had chris on the show he's co-hosted when you were in in jail (laughs) Uh, so we'll come back with more here in moments 855 450 free that's 855-450-3733 chris canwell's had a huge explosion in popularity as a result of saying these things I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping 
make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Do good people ever want to call an attorney just to find out if they're right or wrong? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what are you forced to think about first? Money. If you could call as often as you wanted and talk as long as you need without a bill, would you call? Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want by dialing in toll-free at 855-453-FREE. We are kind of just barely scratching the surface of what has happened within the liberty movement with uh, certain people advocating violence, people, uh, media personalities advocating violence uh, when it comes to the police and in hopes of achieving a more free society. I think it's going to achieve the opposite. Uh, Violence will lead to more violence, will lead to more arming up and uh, less trust and less friendliness and humanity being expressed on on whatever side we're talking about. But we'll get into that discussion. Your calls are welcome here, and you can join us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And if you care about privacy, you need ProXPN. It is a global virtual private network. Private meaning encrypted. They encrypt everything that leaves and comes into your computer 
meaning that before your data gets to your ISP, it's encrypted by ProXPN, meaning your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing online. Right now, they're probably logging every website you visit, every search term you enter for up to five years in some cases. You can stop that logging from happening by going to ProXPN.com slash FTL and downloading their software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. There's even instructions for Linux users to get started with ProXPN that are actually shockingly simple for Linux. Uh, so go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started with their software for free. You can try out their free account, but you're going to want to upgrade uh, to their premium account with our discount code and save 20% for the lifetime of your account. The code is FTL20, and you can do that over at proxpn.com slash FTL. The price, by the way, breaks down all the way to $5 a month when you buy the annual plan and use that discount code FTL20. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. The free account that I mentioned earlier is is, uh, is bandwidth limited. So you want unlimited bandwidth, go with the premium account. You get servers around the world to which you can connect. You can also privately torrent on their premium account and get past regionally blocked websites. ProXPN is a really handy privacy tool, and it's available for you right now. Go and check it out at proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. Don't forget to use our promo code FTL20 at proxpn.com slash FTL as we go to your calls and thoughts. Jamie is in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Jamie. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, first off, I'd just like to mention that I'm a big fan of uh, libertarian brutalism. It's hilarious <laughs> page. But secondly, oh, no. uh, did you guys hear Tesla release all of their patents and open them up to uh, to the public? It's yeah, huge news. Uh, yeah, uh, Jeffrey Tucker just posted about that. I reposted it on my wall. If you guys want to read that story, you I actually should go have to the Objectivist the, Girl wall. I actually have the note from the CEO right here. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and share it. Uh, yesterday, there was a wall of Tesla patents in the lobby of our Palo Alto headquarters. That is no longer the case. They have been removed in the spirit of the open source movement for the advancement of electric vehicle technology. Tesla Motors was created to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. If we clear a path to the creation of compelling electric vehicles, but then lay intellectual property landmines behind us to inhibit others, we are acting in a manner contrary to that goal. Tesla will not initiate patent lawsuits against anyone who, in good faith, wants to use our technology. Pretty amazing stuff, Jamie. What do you think? Yeah, that's epic. That's such awesome news for the movement, for just liberty in general, for just a, a move towards a more open and free society. Hopefully more people, uh, more companies will follow suit. I mean, uh, the, hopefully they won't be the, the lone wolf in the darkness crying out freedom, of, uh, freedom from patents and that other companies will join on board. I don't know. They're, they're feeling a lot of resistance. Um, yeah. across the country, especially in New Jersey. But they're they're making some headway. I guess I just recently heard New Jersey is reconsidering and heading towards allowing them to sell in their, uh, mm -hmm. their state. I think all. they're going to have a lot more luck um, being able to sell cars um, in their, with their you know business model online or whatever, um, the, the, way, the way they do it, um, than they are to get companies to give up patents. They're, you know, like giving up a patent is costly financially. Accepting Bitcoin into your business is not. It's just a little risky in the you know the money transition stage, and most businesses haven't done that yet. So we're I don't think we're anywhere near patents going away because people love to have the government work for them, and that's what a patent is. It turns the government into your security agent for your intellectual well, I property. I don't expect an avalanche of companies to sign on board, but it would be nice if this inspired others to follow suit. Uh, I mean, they give good reasons Absolutely. for it, and if it makes them more popular, then other companies might see that. Oh, no, I totally agree. I don't think it's going to be a, you know, it's going to take a while before the end, every other industry catches on and moves in that direction, but it's definitely a big, inspiring uh, step. Um, awesome. Elon Musk has been doing some pretty awesome things, so. Very cool, Yeah, Jamie. that guy is my hero. Anything else you want to share John tonight? John Galt. Definitely. No, that's it. Thanks, Jamie, for your call. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I'll just continue with his uh, his note here on the teslamotors.com website, and then we can talk more about violence. Yeah. When I started out with my first company, Zip2, I thought patents were a good thing and worked hard to obtain them. And maybe they were good long ago, but too often these days they serve merely to stifle progress, entrench the positions of giant corporations, and enrich those in the legal profession. Yeah, that's what it's really all about, isn't it? 
rather than the actual inventors. After Zip2, when I realized that receiving a patent really just meant that you bought a lottery ticket to a lawsuit, I avoided them whenever possible. At Tesla, however, we felt compelled to create patents out of concern the big car companies would copy our technology and then use their massive manufacturing sales and marketing power to overwhelm Tesla. We couldn't have been more wrong. The unfortunate reality is the opposite. Electric car programs, or programs for any vehicle that doesn't burn hydrocarbons at the major manufacturers, are small to non-existent, constituting an average of far less than 1% of their total vehicle sales. At best, the large automakers are producing electric cars with limited range and limited volume. Some produce zero emission. Uh, some produce no zero emission cars at all. Given that annual new vehicle production is approaching 100 million per year and the global fleet is approximately 2 billion cars, it's impossible for Tesla to build electric cars fast enough to address this carbon crisis. I By think Tesla is very interesting um, with the uh, with the electric car industry because they're. When I see electric cars, usually they've got these they're these little shoe boxes, right? Mm -hmm. These little these little um, two or four door things, um, and they're tiny little cars. Tesla's making full sized fast cars. Okay, guys. So Elon Musk is awesome. Right? <laughs> Agreed. Okay. All right, he's definitely John Galt. But did you guys hear about the Google cars? The little teeny little. Oh you know, my gosh! No they're steering so cool. wheel. They're autonomous. No they're wheel. autonomous cars. I'd be so scared to be in a car like that because <laughs> totally, I would be. It shifts the entire idea behind cars. Do you have any idea what this will do for like insurance premiums? Oh yeah, um, if they work, um, then like. Like wrecks because ninety percent of accidents are due to human error. It's but, true. I mean, I actually don't really believe that. But though. I don't Mo know if I want to be in the car when I it gets it's a most accidents. <laughs> most accidents are caused by by doing a fair amount of speeding and looking around to make sure that cops aren't watching you. That's probably true. But I don't want to be in the Google car when it gets a blue screen of death. I so, mean, it just uh, agreed. I think the the Google the problem with the Google so cool. car is that they remove the steering wheel, and we're not ready for that today. The, some of the, no, the, I'm not ready to give up total control. The next that. thing that's going to come is it's going to be not google cars it's going to be google semi trucks see so you think an override mechanism would probably help sell the car better i i agree well i don't think people are going to necessarily even watch it's not going to it's going to take all of 15 minutes for people to take their eyes off the road and start playing checkers or whatever mm -hmm. it is that they do right <laughs> i don't think that's the, oh the, the big deal but it like <laughs> so cool. the place that you need a driverless car is the interstate you don't need a driverless car to get from your house to the interstate or from the interstate to work. It's the interstate, and that's the easiest thing for a driverless car to take care of: is, is handling other cars on the road, the stop and you know the, the stop and start traffic, communicating, and going on the interstates. Because there's far fewer bits of road that are interstate than there are all these other little areas. And the way the Google car works is it works with Google Maps. And so if they can just make the interstate driving thing work and just make it work in semi-trucks, we've taken a huge step forward. And then after semi-trucks, then, you know, cars where you can just say, okay, I'm on the internet, I'm pushing the automatic pilot button. And then it takes over at that point. Then, you know, you can twist your seat around and work in the, work in the little central console table with the family and, you know, check your laptops or do whatever it is that you do. I think it's going to change everything. And I think it's going to kill domestic air travel. Elon Musk continues in his letter here on TeslaMotors.com. He says, The market is enormous. Our true competition is not the small trickle of non-Tesla electric cars being produced, but rather the enormous flood of gasoline cars pouring out of the world's factories every day. We believe that Tesla, other companies making electric cars in the world, would all benefit from common, rapidly evolving technology platform. Technology leadership is not defined by patents, which has... has which history has repeatedly shown to be small protection indeed against a determined competitor, but rather by the ability of a company to attract and motivate the world's most talented engineers. Here, here. We believe that applying the open source philosophy to our patents will strengthen rather than diminish Bravo. Tesla's position in this regard. Hour three is on the way. That's plenty of time for you to take control of the airwaves here and bring up whatever's on your mind. More about violence next on Free Talk Live. Safety, safety, safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com/safety or stop by Granger for the ones who get it done.
The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the Red Planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Thursday, June 12, 2014. Radio VR News. The Senate has overwhelmingly approved a bill aimed at making sure veterans can get the care they deserve. Correspondent Jerry Bodlander reports on the veterans' health care legislation. The vote was 93 to 3 on the bill, which would make it easier for veterans who've been waiting a long time for their first VA appointment to instead get the care they need from a private doctor. Senate Veterans Affairs Committee Chairman Bernie Sanders says the problems with the VA need to be fixed immediately. Not next week, not next month, but now. The measure also makes it easier to fire senior Veterans Affairs employees whose job performances fall short. The bill is similar to the measure that was approved by the House, and lawmakers expect to be able to iron out the differences without too much trouble. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. <laughs> Long waits persist for veterans seeking mental health care at VA medical centers. Ross Simpson has more on that side of the story. For years, veterans have complained about maddening waits for mental health services at VA medical centers. And for years, federal officials have responded by hiring more clinicians and expanding programs. But an internal audit shows the VA system hasn't solved the problem. Not one of the 141 medical systems examined was able to meet the department's goal of getting all new mental health patients an appointment within 14 days. At 30 facilities, the average wait topped 40 days. I'm Ross Simpson. The number two House Republican says he'll relinquish his leadership position at the end of next month following his stunning primary defeat. Trey Bolander has more on Eric Cantor's resignation. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor isn't second-guessing the way his campaign was run, even though it resulted in the first-ever primary defeat of a House Majority Leader. We did everything we could. Cantor says he'll resign his leadership position at the end of next month and will back number three House Republican Kevin McCarthy if he runs to succeed Cantor. I think he'd make an outstanding majority leader, and um, I will be backing him with my full support. House Republicans will choose Cantor's successor next week. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. Political polarization in America has broken out of the voting booth. How? Sandy Cozell explains. A new survey from the Pew Research Center finds Americans are divided by ideology and partisanship, not only when they cast ballots, but also when choosing where to live, where to get their news, and with whom to associate. According to the poll, the share of Americans who hold across-the-board conservative or liberal views has doubled in the last decade, from 10% in 2004 to 21% today. A third of those who say they regularly vote in primaries have all-or-nothing ideological views. I'm Sandy Kozell. The White House is threatening a veto of a Republican spending bill that would let schools waive meal standards pushed by First Lady Michelle Obama for the next school year. 
If schools have lost money on meal programs over a six-month period, Collada Bradley explains. The White House is threatening to veto a Republican spending bill that would let schools waive meal standards for the next school year if the schools lost money on meal programs over a six-month period. The rules, pushed by First Lady Michelle Obama, require more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains in the lunch line. The White House says the bill would be a step backward for children's health and undermine efforts to provide kids with more nutritious food. Some school officials say the rules are costly and restrictive, and kids are throwing away fruits and vegetables they're forced to take. A final vote on the bill is expected next week. Carlotta Bradley, Washington. A bizarre lesson for some men. One of the victims of an alleged scam by strippers accused of drugging wealthy men and then charging up their credit cards is now hoping he can clear his name without having to pay up. Julie Walker has the story. Dr. Zayad Yunin was charged more than $135,000 by scores in the topless club, even went after him in court to get the money. Now his lawyer, Michael Weinstein, says the charges against the strippers prove the New Jersey cardiologist was drugged and scammed. They would either take compromising pictures of them or do other things and put them in compromising positions and use that later on as either blackmail uh, in order to collect the money that was charged on the credit card. The feds say three other men were also scammed. Four strippers and a club manager have been charged. Julie Walker, New York. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. It's The Onion Radio News. A spokeswoman gives birth to a spokeschild. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Tacoma spokeswoman Tammy Barker became the proud mother of a bouncing baby spokeschild last night. According to spokespeople, Barker, a spokeswoman for a Tacoma-based pharmaceutical firm, the birthing process was a major success. Peter Wahlberg, spokesman for Tammy's husband Phil, had this to say. At 9.17 p.m. last night, an eight-and-a-half-month-old spokes fetus was delivered alive and through the miracle of birth became a seven-pound, six-ounce spokes child. Spokes father and spokes mother are doing fine. Spokeswoman Barker is expected to be released from St. Robert's Hospital tomorrow. The spokes child will remain in the hospital's media care unit for several weeks of training. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. Live. Bring up anything that you want and just dial on in toll free at 855 450 free. We are launching into the third hour of the program here tonight. Probably one of the most important issues of our time is on the table for discussion again as it seems to continue to come back. The idea of violence in response to the state. With you in the studio tonight, by the way, it's Ian. And objectivist girl Lauren Rumpler. And Mark. And, of course, your phone calls are welcome at toll-free number 855-450-FREE. And Skype. You can Skype into our show. Our username is lrn.fm, and that's where we're going to start the hour out here with Luke on the line in Milwaukee. Luke, you're on the air. Hi, guys. Hey. Um, so I said I wanted to discuss the use of force, but I don't even know this situation falls under um, the premise of use of force. I think really it... It boils down to a, what the definition of aggression is. And Cantwell's whole premise, to make a long story short, is that Leos and government agents are basically in a constant state of aggression, mm-hmm. um, which I find it's ridiculous at best. Because, I mean, if you if you accept that premise, you can extrapolate it to say that all statists or all voters are in a constant state of aggression because they're seeking to make policy changes or, you know, anything of the like. And it's just, I think it's a really ridiculous and dangerous and actually a collectivist mindset, you know. It's clearly collectivist. Right. Um, I mean, it. I can see why people feel that way. I mean, many people feel like there's a war on uh, and, and the government's on the other side and we don't even, and most people don't even know it, um, that they, you know, that the, the 
and, and when you can see the the police driving tanks and the kind of weapons they carry, uh, fifty thousand uh, raids, uh, home home invasions, or what do they call them? Uh, home home raids every year. I can see why people feel like there's a war on. The government's on the other side, and most of us don't even know it. And if you decide there's a war on, then it's relatively easy to say soldiers in uniform on the other side, i.e. the police, are fair game. Well, it almost goes back to, like, um, thinking under, like, a, a monarchical system, like, um, you know, that the, the king is, is always in a state of aggression or something. But at least in that situation, you have you have a face, you know, there's a name and a face, and there's someone who's actually barking out all the orders. And... Um, not to say that the system isn't centralized, but in the way that it, the, the hierarchy that it is set up in, you know, yeah, someone's giving out the orders and stuff. But at the end of the day, these guys were sitting eating lunch like they, they weren't they weren't doing anything. So I don't I don't see how this specific instance is, <clears throat> excuse me, anything more than murder. Um, you know I mean, it could come out, you know, after the fact. And, and maybe we don't have all the facts that, you know, maybe these two particular cops just killed these people's parents or something like that. But and then and then maybe then there's there's a discussion about retributive force and stuff like that. But as it stands right now, it's just it's I, I find the premise ridiculous. Right. And I want to address that last thing that you actually just said. Um, so one of the things that uh, advocators of violence try and use is as, as like a, a backing for why they do this is that it's retaliatory force um and and i and it's hard sometimes to determine what when initiative force starts from the government because you know it's technically them ruling over our lives is initiatory force but then again if if they're just sitting eating lunch then is an initiatory force so i say we 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 pass all of that we don't even deal with all of that. And we look at it logically. I mean, look, I, I mean, just look at my article. I mean, I I outline the pros and cons of a violent revolution and using violence to get our way to get to the way of peace. And the pros and cons in of a violent revolution just don't even out. They just don't. I mean, a violent revolution is much more cost than benefit. Well, and that, and that kind of gets back to a question that Mark always brings up whenever this discussion is brought up on the air is, um, excuse me, there's a motorcycle going by. Um, Loud pipes save lives. Yeah. Um, but Mark always asks the question, you know, lay out that path. If you think violent revolution is the way to go, you know, lay out that path. How do we get from where we are now through violence to a voluntary society? And like you're talking about, Lauren, you know, the the costs far outweigh the benefits. Um, yes. It's like step one, kill cops. Step two, the get ex- killed. Th- they're blank. Step Question three, mark. enjoy <laughs> peaceful anarchy. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. work logically. Luke, anything else you want to share tonight? Nope, that's it. Thanks for the night, call. I appreciate hearing from you at 855 450 free or Skype in as Luke did. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Now, Cop Block spoke out uh, this week. Some of the bloggers at Cop Block spoke out. There was some internal strife. I was privy to some of the discussions that went on um, as a longtime supporter of Cop Block. I was aware of this. Christopher Cantwell, for some reason, at some point, had been given administrative uh, access to the Cop Block. Uh, Facebook page now. Cop Block's I thought it was a Twitter account, but okay. Maybe that as well. I know for a fact he was on their Facebook page. Alrighty. Anyway, uh, Cop Block's Facebook page has over six hundred thousand likes and is a very very popular Facebook page. In fact, we recently noted when they surpassed Police One's Facebook page in likes. Police One is a very pro police, very you know pro police state kind of page. Cop Block as pro police accountability, and uh, unfortunately they'd brought Chris on to do some uh, blogging for them and there was some controversy like a year ago when the Free State Project kicked Chris Cantwell out of the that organization that was as a result of a blog post that he made that was featured on copblock.org and so i guess he's kind of been on board since since that time and of course recently with the Las Vegas shootings Cantwell wrote up an article entitled Dead Men Don't Start Revolutions where he Essentially, I'm going to try to encapsulate his piece, uh, he essentially cheered on the killing of the police, but at the same time said that... There's sh- some coaching techniques on how to do it, right? He basically said the shooters shouldn't have gone and shot up a restaurant, they shouldn't have gone and shot somebody at a Walmart, but he didn't say anything that... He didn't say that it was bad, 
uh, to shoot the police. And in fact, he basically cheered it on. So Cop Block, uh, some of the people who support Cop Block basically came to the table and said, look, this is not appropriate for Cop Block's mission. It doesn't match up with Cop Block's m- message of peace. And, uh, and so, so there were certain people, including Meg McLean, a former talk show host here on Free Talk Live, who said she was going to publicly withdraw her support for Cop Block. Other people didn't, you know, they didn't say anything. They just unliked the page and they, they had the largest number of unlikes in, a, in like a one week time they've ever had. So there was some, you know, there were different signals coming in from the marketplace. Yeah. And uh, longtime Cop Block supporters, including Meg and myself, you know, we basically said, look, this is very concerning. Um, please do something about this. And so a post has been made uh, over at copblock.org. This was published yesterday that says Cop Block is committed to the non aggression principle. And it's signed by multiple Cop Block supporters, including the fa- uh, one of the co founders, Pete Ayer who we've had on the show a number of times, Nathan Cox, also another uh, great activist who's a major cop blocker, and several others. We at Cop Block would like to address the article written and shared to Cop Block's Facebook page by former, in italics, former author Christopher Cantwell, entitled Dead Men Don't Start Revolutions, as it was reasonably and understandably concerning to many of you and many of us. As you know, Cop Block is entirely run by and composed of various dedicated and passionate volunteers. Our practice is to encourage almost all forms of discourse, as we believe there to be merit in the free exchange of ideas. We welcome discussions of all types and are always thrilled when people volunteer to take on more responsibilities in the organization. However, we seek to maintain an underlying commitment to the non-aggression principle. In our view, Mr. Cantwell's inflammatory call for violence and thinly veiled implication that all cops, regardless of individual action, should be subject to death, encourages a violation of the non-aggression principle. We, the undersigned, would like to make known that we as individuals do not endorse Cantwell's writings, and as writers and team members of Cop Block, we affirm the non-aggression principle and do not wish violence on anyone. We aren't about promoting violence. We're about educating, revealing the reality of the police state, and spreading the idea that badges don't grant extra rights. And then they go further into a kind of a breakdown of what it was that Cantwell said and and what uh, the authors in this particular article think about that. They're going to define what self-defense and justified force and violence is. Because Cantwell's argument, counter-argument to this, would be that this isn't a violation of the non-aggression principle, that killing the police is completely legitimate under the non-aggression principle in that the police have already aggressed, so therefore violence is entirely appropriate to yeah, use on you, them. You know, Ian, after we get back from the break, I really want to say something very important about this comment that human that cops are not human. We'll come back with more, and uh, your thoughts are also welcome. Dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. More Free Talk Live coming up. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Why did you move to the Shire? 
I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Plenty of time for your calls and thoughts. You just dial in toll-free and bring up anything at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You Skype in to username lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian. And objectivist girl Lauren Rumpler. And Mark. Uh, Join us again over at freetalklive.com. All kinds of features there are free. Free Talk Live will be breezing into the Windy City in July, the 19th and 20th, for the North American Bitcoin Conference. For those of you who don't know what the Wendy's is. Is that uh, Chicago or Detroit? <laughs> That's a joke. Ian, it's his, it's his joke for the month. Excellent work, Ian. That's so good. Um, We're so proud of you, Ian. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the list of speakers, and it is long and distinguished for the North American Bitcoin Conference at Chicago's McCormick Place South Building. Uh, including Trace Meyer of the Armory Wallet, Brock Pierce, who's going to be talking about investing in digital currency, uh, Christina Gorlick from cloudhashing.com, Vitalik Buterin from ethereum.com, Peter Smith of blockchain.info, one of my favorites, Roger Veer. I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Mm. And um, Ian and I will be doing the show there, two nights of uh, Free Talk Live, live. So if you're in the Midwest, please come out and see us. As a matter of fact, tickets are pretty cheap in the Midway. You can come from anywhere in the U.S. to uh, to, to see the show live. It's, uh, excuse me, the, the website is btcchicago.com, and BTC is short for Bitcoin. btcchicago.com. You can pay in Bitcoin, or you can pay in cash. You're up to you, btcchicago.com. All right, uh, we're going to get back to coplock.org, and Lauren, I know you had something to say about the whole Chris Cantwell uh, situation. I that's, do. That's coming up. Simon's on the line in Tennessee. Simon, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, welcome. I wanted to talk about the overall uh topic of friendship and more specifically about opening up the subject of liberty i was telling your screener about i've had friends in the past even childhood friends that i'm a, I'm a truck driver i'll get to talking to them and uh having good conversation and all and then i brought up the uh, deal with liberty and and i tried the alex jones way i've tried your way i you know like i mentioned 9 11 and you know about being overseas because the government used that at least trying it that way and he didn't take a lot of that well my new friend that i'm just speaking with uh, last night, we got onto that topic, and I mentioned Ron Paul trying to do it more of a, you know, the way you guys talk about Ron Paul, and he's like, well, that guy, he gets into drugs, and, you know, that just does it for me. And I was just wondering if you've had this, I, I imagine you have had this experience, because you moved to New Hampshire, so you could be around people that believe the same way you do, but uh, just ideas of how to 
you know, bringing these ideas and maybe do it more slowly because it's that kind of shocks people and then they kind of just catch you off. I don't know if you've experienced this before, but yeah, for me, I think that the um, the system that I found that works best, and it's you, each person has to kind of form it to the individual situation, but um, is to get the person to explain how liberty might work is to have them work out the um, the scenarios in their head. So what I did, and this is particularly effective with my wife, was, is, you know, I do a nationally syndicated radio program on the ideas of liberty. How do I present this message or that message about this topic or that topic in a way that people can understand um, that, you know, comes from the idea of liberty. So she would explain right. it to me. And, it, you know, oh, well, I'll explain it how, how you would argue from that point. It's kind of like debate club. You know, when you're told to take a position, and that position might be counter to your position, but you're just supposed to argue it anyway. If you can get them to take the, the liberty position and argue it, and they can do this on multiple occasions, they, they will um, get the ideas and they'll get them quickly. You know, I am really glad that you asked this question because – I am actually, my new show that I'm starting is about that precise thing, how to communicate the message of liberty to outsiders. So it's hmm. it's very easy to communicate our ideas within our circle because we all kind of speak the same language and we all kind of have the same passion. So when we get heated and excited, we don't scare other libertarians, but we scare hmm. outsiders. So Shire Dude, my friend, and I have just started a new show. It's called Hearts and Minds, and it's going to be... Uh, at 6 p.m. tomorrow on the Voluntary Virtues Network. And the first episode and all of those after it, it's a vodcast. So it's a video and a podcast put together. And we're going to talk about communicating the message of liberty. And I think that it's such an important thing because so many people have that exact same question that you do right there. And we want to answer that. And we don't think anybody's answering that question currently. Well, so, that'd be easy to find on the Free Talk Live website, the new show you're speaking of. No, it's a different, uh, no, different it's, site. It's the Voluntary Virtues Network, but if you add Objectivist Girl on Facebook, I will post about it uh, probably about 5 o'clock and put a link up so that you can watch it at 6. Now, there's a great organization that's been around for a long time, uh, and they've been really they're, – they're, they're focused on communicating the ideas of liberty. They're called the Advocates for Self-Government, and you can go to their website at theadvocates.org, and there are all kinds of tools that they have. Uh, you know, They've got books. They've got audios that you can download or buy to learn techniques to be better communicators of the ideas of freedom. And these guys have been doing this for a long time. They're very, very polished at it, and there's some really good, some great material there. And, and some of it's available for free as well. So that's theadvocates.org, great place to go and sort of um, make yourself a better communicator of these ideas. And I would say that I think the best way to get these concepts out, at a, whether it's a workplace or it's you know friends out at the bar or whatever situation – I think the best way to do it is to take the long road and to not push, uh, to oh, yes. wait, you know, to wait until the topic comes up, to wait until a topic comes up where preferably you agree with the person with their position already and you can sort of show them the the principles of liberty and how they apply in that circumstance and then hopefully you can show them how those same principles apply in other circumstances when other topics come up. You know, Ian, that's really funny because that is actually what our first episode is about. Okay, great. It's about letting it come up naturally. Right. So I hope you guys will watch it tomorrow. It should be a really good show. It's very funny. We decided to make sure that it was humorous because it can get a little boring when you're talking about how to communicate uh, ideas of liberty simply because you got to do it on a, a simple level that people can understand. So we decided to make it to mix in some slapstick humor in with it. So it should be a really great and very funny show. And if it comes up, uh, have, go ahead. I have the advocates.org. What's her uh, Facebook page again? Objectivist Girl. Okay, I'll write that down and look that up. There you go, Simon. Thanks for the call tonight. I Thank appreciate you. hearing from you. Good luck out there communicating with Thanks. folks. In fact, if you you know if you kind of make yourself over time, slowly when it comes up, into the the go to guy for the liberty perspective, eventually people will ask you 
for your opinion on things. And that's when you really yeah. have the inroads. Because if you just start pushing or puking liberty onto people, which is one of the problems, <laughs> that's right? That's what like, they do. They puke liberty. Right. Well, and, and it's understandable. These are exciting ideas. They're they you know they get us going, right? And so when you first come across the ideas of freedom, you inevitably just want to blah 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 and just spit it all over everybody that you come in contact. You with. know, I would almost say that it is initiating violence <laughs> with some of the ways that people decide to communicate the ideas of liberty to outsiders. There. It's certainly ineffective. Yeah. <laughs> so take the long road. Be patient. Wait for the conversations to come up. And then take a, you know, try not to dominate those conversations. There's also some good sales techniques out there that, that he who is talking the most is losing uh, the conversation. So ask questions more so than go off on rants or uh, long-winded tangents. Try to be the opposite of a talk show host when you're in a, a real conversation with somebody. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Arguing certainly doesn't work. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Uh, more nope. on the way. You take control. We'll talk violence. That's still to come here on Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555 501 Two. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? 
If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Talk Live. Plenty of time for your call and thoughts. Just dial in toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Talk to us about whatever you want, though. We're talking about violence and how it is not a solution to achieving any liberty in our lifetime. We'll continue that discussion. Cash into coins.com is morphed. They are now ExpressCoin. So CashIntoCoins.com, we've been talking about in the past a lot. ExpressCoin does the same exact stuff that CashIntoCoins.com did. They're just doing it better. And uh, it's the same folks behind the scenes. One of the new additions, Dogecoin. More easy, so fast, much legal, wow, inexpensive. ExpressCoin's the best choice for buying Bitcoins or Dogecoin. And, of course, they still pride themselves on their uh, their excellent customer service. Uh, in fact, the back end on their website will actually meet, uh, allow them to focus even more on meeting your needs through ExpressCoin.com. You can get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer. And, you know, when I was there at ExpressCoin.com, I even saw cash as an option. Now, I didn't go any further than that to figure out exactly how that works, but it was on their list. So go and check it out at ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their new app at ExpressCoin.com. Uh, so, back to the story here. Copblock.org speaking out against Chris Cantwell, who is a former blogger of theirs. And they're going into uh, Pete Ayers, one of the founders of Copblock.org. He and Great several guy. other co signers have spoken out here in an article entitled Copblock is Committed to the Non Aggression Principle. And they uh, kind of explain what they they mean by self-defense and force, justified force and violence. As a general matter, self-defense or defense of another is the use of reasonable force to repel, prevent, or protect the self or another from imminent attack or danger. Another type of justified force would be the use of force or violence for purposes of rectifying and compensating the effects of initiatory violence. Examples of this would be using appropriate and proportional force to retrieve stolen property or seek restitution for a victim of initiatory violence, among others. Contrary to what Christopher Cantwell's article claims, it is not impossible to murder an aggressor or aggress upon an aggressor. This is patently incorrect. Consider, for example, the following. Aggressor number one punches a victim in the head and then runs off. The next day, aggressor two, a stranger to both aggressor one and victim, randomly ambushes aggressor uh, aggressor one and kills him. As aggressor two's actions are neither, one, reasonable force to prevent an attack, nor two, use of force or violence for the purposes of rectifying and compensating initiatory violence against himself, this would constitute murder. It is still initiation of aggression, even though aggressor number one was also an initiator of aggression upon someone else. Well, I mean, the fact is we've all made mistakes in our lives, so therefore we're all aggressors, and that would put everybody, um, you know, if if you're supposed to just kill an aggressor, um, that that puts everybody in a situation where they are worthy of death. Well, right, and then uh, they also point out that it's imminent attack and danger in which you can defend yourself. So if you aggressed against somebody in the past— um, you may owe them restitution, but you shouldn't have your life taken from you down the line because maybe you've changed since then. Well, I don't know that you can only use force if you're under an immediate um, imminent threat. Um, if, for instance, somebody's holding your property, I think that you might have, you know, you'd have justification. Well, that was the other point that they they okay. pointed out here was that if you're retrieving property, then okay, I'm sorry, I missed you that can part. use force to uh, to it. to retrieve that property, but you don't get to blast the person in in the head after you've taken your stove back. Or whatever it is that you're trying to do. I don't think uh, I, I don't think property is worthy of killing no, somebody. No, um, not, not, at all. not the kind of thing that generally gets taken out of a house. At least I suppose, you know, if it's if we're talking about enough money, but you know, the idea of shooting somebody over a color TV or um, you know some kind of well, appliance or I something. I don't know at what amount uh, somebody's life becomes uh, worth. I don't, I don't think, know either. I'm not comfortable with any amount. 
I, personally. I, I get where you're coming from, but you know, if you've got your life savings and gold bars in your bedroom or something like that, and somebody mm-hmm. finds them, and you know they're they're taking them out, I, I, I you could always shoot the person in the leg. No, yeah, legs are back. much harder to hit, and you, apparently you don't understand how center of mass works. But um, the I, I get. I consider rubber bullets. I mean, you know, a couple of plugs from those things, and I think that a person's liable to go down and you can get to take care of them and hold them at bay with a knife or something. But, you know, the argument that they're making to justify hurting these cops is that they're not human beings. And mm. I Really? Think, Who has made that argument? Um, so I believe that Kokesh has made that argument. Wow. Um, I'd like to hear the quote on that one. Right. You have a raw story piece, Lauren, about I that. Do. I want you to dig through it and find that quote because I'm interested in having that discussion, but I want to get Pete's thoughts out here about aggression. So going on here, uh, the analysis does not change if the actors are police officers. Here at Cop Block, we stress that police are human like everyone else. They're not gods, as most Americans are led to believe, thanks to decades of indoctrination via government schools and corporate media, and ought to be subject to the same rules, responsibilities, and consequences as ordinary individuals. Badges don't grant extra rights, but neither do they strip people of basic rights. We have a fundamental difference in understanding of what is accurately described as self-defense or appropriate non-initiatory violence in the context of Mr. Cantwell's article. In our view, self-defense or defense of another constitutes using deadly force upon the police only if they were initiating deadly force on a victim at the moment. Justified violence might be, and some may disagree, among the following. Using a reasonable amount of violence to obtain the money those particular cops stole from specific victims using a reasonable amount of violence to obtain compensation for specific victims injured by those specific officers, and at the very worst, if there was evidence those officers murdered someone, some advocates of the non-aggression principle might find, and many would disagree, that it is acceptable for a family member or private defense agency to exact some kind of forceful punishment. Now, I don't care whether it's uh, uh, w- whether it's moral or not. What I care about is whether it'll work and it won't work. Um, using, violence, using, violence. using violence against police or other government agencies the argument that I made. Yeah. yeah. It's a system that simply will not work. I totally agree. It's uh, it's a bad idea for a lot of different reasons. Um, number one reason is you're going to end up dead after the fact because the cops aren't going to care about your moral justifications. You know, you can point out that the cops might have just beaten your friend and that that was your reason to shoot a cop, but the cops won't care about you. you won't, they won't even listen to a word that you say as they blast you to death and hack you to bits. Uh, with, you know, hundreds of bullets, as they've been known to do. These are the principles, says uh, the authors at Cop Block, that uh, we believe to be applicable to all human beings, police officers included, with reference to the Vegas killings in the absence of any evidence that those cops murdered anyone, killing them while they were eating lunch, fits neither within the definition of self-defense, defense of another, or justified violence. It is thus murder. If Mr. Cantwell's premise is to be accepted, then it follows that it's morally correct for random people, non-victims, to murder any criminal who has initiated violence, no matter how petty the offense. This is simply absurd. Mr. Cantwell's claim that anyone is entitled to kill cops at any time because cops are constantly initiating aggression is merely an ugly form of collectivism. This claim is essentially that because some cops commit murder, and many of them steal, that all cops deserve to be ambushed, and randomly executed regardless of individual actions. This is no different from gang enhancement penalties, wherein people are punished excessively for crimes that otherwise should bear lesser penalties on the sole basis that they are a member of a gang. This is no different from saying that violence is acceptable if enforced for the greater good. If the non-aggression principle does not allow for street-style execution of people who have committed theft, it certainly doesn't allow for street-style execution of cops who have been proven guilty of nothing. It's also worthwhile to note there are different levels of aggression. Yes, there are cops that have committed murder, rape, and or abuse. And there are plenty that have not nearly committed anything rising to those levels. There are police officers who do very little aside from conduct traffic. There are police officers who spend most of their time at a desk. Even if we assume that all police officers commit some kind of theft through traffic tickets, the appropriate and proportionate punishment for theft is not death. It's a dangerous error to claim that it is justified to kill all police officers on the grounds set forth by Mr. Cantwell. Calling for the blanket death of all cops is not the appropriate response to whatever unknown slash unproven aggressions one particular cop may or may not have committed. Central to creating a reality absent 
the institutionalized violence of the police state is the recognition of individual rights, individual responsibilities, and individual accountability based on specific individual actions and consequences. It is not about probabilities, possibilities, or likelihoods based on one's profession slash membership in a group or gang and what one has likely done and or might do. That is called statism. We'll come back with more and uh, focus on the humanity of the police next. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to unseennow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. Unseennow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at unseennow.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud, the fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com. Free Talk Live. There's only one place you could have sex without everybody else knowing about it. <laughs> That's in the bathroom. It Unless was... you want to go back into the crew quarters, which might give you bonus points. The Mile High Club awards you, I suppose, based on the amount of times that you've entered into the club. Not only do you want to be in the club, you want to be the top dog. Yeah, right? you, you got to be sure. a premier yeah. member. So I would think there'd have to be points for location on the plane who you encountered with. Were sure. you there with your girlfriend? Did you take her into the bathroom? Oh. Did you manage to get a stewardess into the bathroom with you? That Did you manage trick. to yeah. get uh, the girl that you just happened to be sitting next to on the plane? I mean, so all of these things could Yeesh. be worth... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> to be a part of the Mile High Club, what's the criteria? You have copulate to... Copulate in the air. Yeah. What defines copulation? Who has to have an orgasm? Does there have to be an orgasm? Or do you or- just have to stick it in and pull it out? Is it right. just penetration? Bam, bam. We're yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Mile yeah. High Club, get We're my in. card. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. 
bring up whatever you want here in the remaining moments. The toll-free number is for you at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. OMG, we are 10 days away from Pork Fest, ah! the Porcupine mm. Freedom Festival. My first one. Real? That's right. So excited. It is exciting. <laughs> I'm excited, and it's my eighth or something like that. Been to a lot of these things, and they have been just great every single year and growing with more people who love freedom coming to New Hampshire, many of whom for the first time. Most attendees of the Porcupine Freedom Festival every year, the majority, super majority almost, of attendees are brand new. They've never been to New Hampshire. They've never been to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Uh, they're they're going to be like Lauren coming in with wide eyes and just amazed at what they see because it's awesome to have 1,500 liberty-oriented people all hanging out at the same campground for an entire week. And that's what the Porcupine Freedom Festival is. It's kind of like a highlight of what it could be like someday when we finally get enough people who love freedom together in New Hampshire. Now, we've got 1,500 people in New Hampshire, but we're all spread out. So, you know, there's maybe a couple hundred people in the Manchester area, a few dozen in the Keene area, I don't know how many on the seacoast, Concord. So there's 1,500 people total that are already here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. We want to get to 20,000 people who are here as part of the Free State Project. And the Free State Project's Porcupine Freedom Festival is kind of a teaser. It's a taste of what that's like. And uh, this year is going to be great. It's a DIY theme, do-it-yourself, lots of learning that can be going on at the, uh, the Free State Project's pork fest and also fun stuff like uh, buzz's big gay dance party it's happening Woo-hoo! again this year lots of fun there's actually another dance party happening on a different night i think the goth yeah the big goth dance party are you going to that lauren yeah of course are you a goth are you like into the no. goth thing no. are you gonna anybody can up? find a black dress though um yeah i guess i could find a black dress so, i just like dance parties yeah. i mean who doesn't like to dance for liberty there's gonna be an electronic music uh, party as well as i understand it so lots of you know there's partying there's family stuff going on. I don't know, Mark. What I, sort of family stuff uh, is happening? I you find the greatest way to fight for liberty is to dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think V for Vendetta or the V character said something about dancing. If you don't have dancing, you don't have a revolution or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Right? Like uh, I would say for, uh, for for family stuff, there's just a lot of kid games that go on. Mm-hmm. The the moms and families and dads get together. And dogs even. Do stuff. Dogs too. So, yeah. you know, I mean, it's it's a good time had by all. And so go and learn more at porkfest.com. You can't get your tickets online now. You will have to get them at the event. But there's plenty of room for you. Don't You don't have to worry about it selling out. It's a big park. The uh, Rogers Campground can easily hold 4,000 people. And there were probably about 1,500 people that were there last year. So we got room for you. Come on up. If you can only come up for the weekend or a couple, even if it's just a couple days during the week, let's say you can only sneak up for a day or two in the middle of the week, it's worth it to come up even if it's in the middle of the week because Pork Fest just keeps getting more. It just keeps getting busier. I remember last year you're being amazed on Monday. You know, Sunday's the first day, Sunday the 22nd. I remember being amazed at how many people were there on Monday compared to just the year prior. So it's a lot of fun. We'll see you there, by the way. Free Talk Live going to be broadcasting live every single night from the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Go to porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com to learn more. So we are talking about uh, certain people within the liberty movement, Christopher Cantwell, Adam Kokesh now, apparently. I know, right? Lauren has a story from rawstory.com. And then the suggestion made earlier, these are two people who've come out in favor of violence. Yeah, he seemed to be implying it. So I, I confuse that with Cantwell. We've talked about so many things. But um, your caller earlier seemed to be implying the cops weren't human. He definitely suggested and, that. And you know, and I want to say something that I think is very important, and I, I hope everybody will listen with very, very big ears right now. Uh, to state the cops are not human because of their actions is to undermine the importance of treating everyone as individuals. It's not the actions of an individual that determine people's right to life, but their very existence. And their existence allows them the right to not have their lives taken from them. Effectively, if you kill a cop in retaliatory force, then you're not reducing the likelihood of that threat of violence at all. That one cop is backed by an entire agency, and because of this, you have taken a man's life for no reason. Retaliatory force is to prevent your own suffering of violence, but killing one cop doesn't do this. It's true. It certainly doesn't. And I think that one of the things that changed for me when I moved to New Hampshire was I got to really um, I got to really encounter police as human beings. When I was living in Florida, there were a lot of cops in Florida, a lot of cops in the Sarasota County area. I don't even know how many hundreds of police they must have there, but 
I would guess it's probably in the high hundreds, if not in the low thousands. Um, Sarasota's hundreds, fairly, I would think. Yeah, but including the sheriffs, including I know, the sheriffs. sheriffs and police, and so there's a lot of even cops. Manatee County and. And uh, and you don't get to know them. You don't know who any of them are. Um, just, there's too many. If you encounter one cop, you probably won't see that same cop again for a long time. In a place like New Hampshire in Keene, there's 40. And so it's totally possible to see the same police over and over again. And that, to me, you know, it kind of created a, a situation in which I had to get to know these guys. You know, I had to have conversations with them. As an activist, being out in the streets, you're going to encounter the police. In this case, in New Hampshire, if you're anywhere in New Hampshire, you're going to encounter the same police over and over again, which inevitably is going to lead to building a relationship uh, between you and those police. Unless, of course, they treat you like uh, the chief of police treats me here, like I don't exist, and uh, he doesn't even look at me. But most of the police will actually well, look at me and talk nuisance. to me. Well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are friendly. Most of them are, are yeah. you know, well, people you can have a conversation that's with. That's bad police work, mind you. Um, oh, he's I mean, like a little child. Well, keep, your, keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, this is a terrible, <laughs> a terrible way to run a police department. It's <laughs> terrible um, procedure. The, the fact is cops try to get to, to know gang members and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's the smart thing to do. So that they can make backroom deals with them. <laughs> So <laughs> whatever might be the reason, it's good police work. <laughs> anyway, I think that uh, police are human beings, and that is a ch- that is a viewpoint that I've changed on over time since I moved to New Hampshire. If you can take somebody's humanity away simply by declaring it, you can take anyone's humanity away by declaring it. Mm-hmm. I know. That's why I made that statement. That's why it was so important for me to make that statement is that exi- because you exist— you have all negative rights and you have a right to not be to not have your life taken away from you if, or your property or anything else, any extension of your life and what you have earned and what you've accomplished. And to take that away from somebody is not retaliatory force, especially when they're a cop and backed by an agency. If we want to be treated like human beings, if we want to be treated like we have rights, then we should offer the same treatment to the people who would oppress us. And it's true. These very same cops that I've created a relationship with here in Keene, most of them would arrest me if they were told to do so. And, you know, I forgive them in advance for uh, for doing that. You know, people need to give peace a chance. They need to understand that if, if we really want peace in this world, we have to give it an actual chance and you- stop talking about... Uh, situations in which it would be all right to kill cops or all right to overthrow the government. It's not all right. It's time to put an end to the idea that it is all right. Um, Peace starts with you. And as soon as we do that, exactly. You have to be peace. As soon as you put that idea out of your mind and that what if situation, peace is actually given a chance. Let's go to Jesse. He's in Madison. Jesse, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Lauren, and Mark. Hi. Hey, Jesse. Um, Hi, Jesse. Hi. Uh, um, I'm just a little confused by cop block. Um, it seems to me that they want to have their cake and eat it too. I mean, they have garnered a huge amount of likes on Facebook by constantly posting memes that, you know, put an emphasis on the fact that even the mere presence of a cop is a underlying threat of violence and so forth. But then, you know, in the next breath, they want to say, well, We can't condone hurting cops. Uh, They were just sitting there doing their own thing. They're not a threat. I mean, you can't have it both ways. I I don't don't think they didn't say. I don't. I don't think they said the police aren't a threat. I mean, the the cop block. I think pretty much is aware that the police are a very dangerous threat to your freedom. But they were saying that murdering the police is not a solution. That is not uh, going to reduce the violence. That is not going to increase our freedom. Well, that, that may be so, but uh, I mean, <laughs> they they make a very concerted effort to point out the fact that the cops, you know, like I said, the mere presence of a cop is a threat of violence. Ever looked so, in the rearview mirror and seen flashing lights? Did you feel threatened? Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. Right. So how can they turn around and say that you don't have the right... Like, to feel threatened. Well, you I can mean, feel threatened. Where, where do you draw, where do you, yeah, but where do you draw the line? I mean, if you feel threatened, if you feel like maybe this person is going to do violence upon you, how, how can they turn around and say well, that, that gives, it's not? It gives a lot of excuses to a lot of paranoid schizophrenics to kill a lot of people. 
just because they were okay, scared. Well, yeah, they're, 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 I, I felt they were a threat. That's it, what the police If use. I could run around just saying I'm killing people because I feel like they're a threat, a potential threat, that's... Uh, Jesse, I wish we had more time to talk about this with you, um, but we are out of it for tonight, so feel free to call earlier in the show, any old time, tomorrow, or any other day, and we can discuss this in greater detail. Thank you for the call tonight. It has been Ian here with you. And Objectivist Girl, Lauren Rumpler. And Mark. Lauren, your website is ObjectivistGirl.com. Right, and check out my new show, Hearts and Minds. Check me out at Porkfest. I'll be doing that speech. See and you there. Uh, Online yeah. in the meantime, freetalklive.com. Are you a pro- We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasing.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, June 12th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.31 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,266 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $636. Antiwar.com reports, having drawn down the number of drone strikes against Pakistani territory to almost nothing in recent months, the U.S. was surprisingly aggressive yesterday in North Waziristan, launching two strikes in 24 hours, killing 16 people. The first attack killed six suspects in Dargamandi, destroying a truck and setting a nearby house on fire fire. The second strike in the village of Dande Darpakol killed 10 people and wounded four others. Though the Pakistani government is back to the old strategy of labeling everyone slain suspects, none of the victims in either attack were actually named, and there was no indication the U.S. even suspected they had high-profile targets in sight. There has been speculation that the recent calm was in part due to almost having killed POW Bo Bergdahl in previous strikes in the region, and some were predicting Bergdahl's recovery might give the U.S. a free hand to escalate the attacks again. Whether yesterday's attacks portend a new escalation or are a one-off situation remains to be seen. During the 2013 Porcupine Freedom Festival, Davi Barker presented an idea for a renegade psychological experiment. Since then, he has refined his idea and put his plan and research into writing. He explains, We aim to show the world beyond a shadow of a doubt that power corrupts absolutely and corrupt authority deserves no obedience. Authoritarian sociopathy is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores.
Ballot access news reports. On May 31st, the Libertarian Party moved its national office into an office that the party now owns. The new headquarters is located at 1444 Duke Street in Alexandria, Virginia. It is believed that the Libertarian Party is the only nationally organized political party other than the Republicans or Democrats to have its own headquarters building. The last minor parties that owned their own headquarters building are believed to be the Socialist Workers Party and the Communist Party, which once owned buildings in New York City. The Libertarian Party also seems to be the only nationally organized political party that has set the location and date of its 2016 presidential convention. That convention will be in Orlando, Florida, May 26th through the 30th, 2016. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Antiwar.com reports the Ukrainian Health Ministry issued a statement reporting at least 270 people have died in the ongoing fighting in eastern Ukraine, with 225 killed in Donetsk and 45 in Luhansk. The ministry said 15 women and 14 children were among those slain. The health ministry seemed open to the idea that their figure was an undercount, saying it only included people brought to health ministry facilities and morgues and not bodies that may have been removed by rebel fighters. The offensive continues primarily centered around Slovyansk and Kramatorsk, neighboring cities in the north of Donetsk. Reports from Slovyansk suggest most of the civilians have fled after weeks of shelling. Additionally, Russia and Ukraine have ended their current round of talks on their gas trade with a stalemate and both sides complaining the other wasn't taking the talk seriously on reaching a settlement. Ukraine owes Russia's Gazprom several billion dollars in back payments, and while the deadline for the payment was extended earlier this month, the acrimony is once again on the rise. At issue primarily is the question of price. Gazprom had initially sought to raise Ukraine's price to $485 per 1,000 cubic meters, roughly in line with what they charged the rest of Europe. Russia finally offered a price of $385, but that too was rejected by Ukraine, which was seeking $268.50, in line with the price Russia was giving the previous Ukrainian government. This has been FPP Radio News online at fppradio.com. According to locals waiting for a 66 bus in downtown Chicago last night, a young couple was making out in the passenger shelter like they were in Paris or something. Onlookers spoke to reporters.